Welcome back, y'all. Um, I'm excited for our guest today. She has been on nine different magazine covers, including Maximum Australia in 2018. In July 2019, uh, she was in Playboy Denmark in 2021, Playboy Sweden in April of 2021, Maxim New Zealand in October 19, FHM United States in August 2019, Playboy Australia June 2019, and Playboy South Africa in July of 2017. And she's done several other things since then, and we're super happy to have her here. Please welcome Miss Elizabeth Marie Chevalier. How you Hello. doing? I'm good. How are you? Beautiful, man. I'm excited. So, uh, yeah, last night we went out to a party. We did not drink, right? We were, no, we, we were, were. We were good. We were drinking water the whole time. Definitely. It was a water party. It was a water party. You got, <laughs> you got a jean jacket? Yeah, I stole a jean jacket because it was uh, industry night. Yeah, it was an industry, industry night. night. It was, uh, uh, I forgot, it was the Army of the Wild or something like that. Or yeah. I forgot what exactly what it was, but it was some crazy party that we had last night. It was really funny watching all the club promoters like yeah. stare at you the whole time. Yeah, they were like, what are you doing here? Why are you, why is this girl who's 6'2 <laughs> yeah. hanging out with us I am 6'2 in heels. And those heels, you were, you you were know, an inch taller why, than me. That's why I can't find anyone to date me because I'm terrifyingly tall. Yeah. <laughs> Terrifying. Was yeah. The, that was the word I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. I'm taller than you, and I'm still terrified. Yeah. yeah. I feel you are really tall. I appreciate and that. And muscular. Stop and it. Handsome. This is not my podcast. This is your <laughs> podcast. This is your interview. It's not mine. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, so let's see, let's see this. So one of the things you, we talked about last night at dinner is that you, you like being private. And this is a, kind of an I interesting di dichotomy because uh, I meet a lot of uh, influencers, and yeah. several of them are models. And then you'll find that, like, there's a, sh there's a, a performance they have to put on for the magazine or yeah. for the interview or yeah. for the red carpet. And then otherwise they want to be at home with their Yorkie watching, you know, Netflix. Mm -hmm. And so is that how you are? Do you, is there like a, a dichotomy with you? Um, yes, but I would say that I'm, I've always been a private person and always to myself and just kind of like a lone wolf. So I kind of just that way. I mean, I like to be a picture. I don't like people to, um, I don't know. Get to know me too well. I uh, like to. I like to have that kind of control over, you know, what people know narrative. about me. Yeah. Yeah. Because they feel like, you know, with the articles that I've done, or you know, the magazines or the pictures that I post online, it's kind of like people have this preconceived notion of me, and mm. they don't really know who I really, truly am. And I like that because they're based. They're judging me based on the pictures that I post, the articles that are online. And uh, so their judgments mean less because they, they mean less. But once if they really, truly, you know, got to know me and then they didn't like me, I would be, be heartbroken. So, yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> should, you shouldn't be. Fuck, them. Yeah, fuck people. <laughs> I, I wouldn't worry about seriously, because, you know, like, you know, I, the one of the things I do on the show is that mm -hmm. if I have. Uh, you know, Swedish Bella on here or Nara Ford or later on Tucci Cash when they come. Wait, on, is that the Swedish Killer? No, Swedish Killer is a different girl. She's, I love her yeah, boobs. She, she's definitely coming on too. We talked about that 100%. So I, she. So, I'm like, look at her Instagram more than I should. So the thing about it with, with those girls is that, like, they're, every other show they're going to go on is going to make them one dimensional. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like they, they come off as a sexual object on Instagram. And so then the questions are all about that. And like, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm not interested because everyone else is going to do it. There's no point in doing that. So yeah. I, do, I do find it fascinating. So this is the first interview you've done. This is the first true podcast interview I've ever done. Yeah. So yeah. Special. Yeah, I feel special, I feel incredibly special. <laughs> how, how did I talk you into this? I don't know. You're just like an, everybody loves you. You're just an awesome, awesome guy. I can't deal with. And this. it's your birthday. I don't know if anybody knows this, but today is Michael's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Seen the happy birthday song. <laughs> oh man, I'm embarrassed. Um, we we are uh, throwing this huge party tomorrow. And we can't tell him the theme, but I I told him the theme last night and I ruined it. So I'm a terrible friend. I did. I don't. Remember, <laughs> I seriously don't remember what you told me. So let's just Good. Not, let's not yeah. go over it. Yeah. We're all gonna be dressed really sexy walking around the casino, and he's gonna he's gonna be the object of. <laughs> just torture. I'm, I'm getting objectified for yeah. my birthday. We're going to objectify you. Okay. <laughs> nice. We're going to have so much fun. So uh, here, here's one thing I am curious about. So I'm always interested in if a girl has a transition, like a glow up internally or mm -hmm. externally. What were you like in high school? Were you the pretty girl in high school or was this something that... I was the girl... I was a cheerleader. Okay. I was a soccer player. Mm. Um, and I did gymnastics. And I... I was the girl that had the boyfriend. Yeah. But like, I, you know, I didn't really like connect with girls that well, which makes me very sad because I wish that 
you know, I was the girl with the boyfriend. I was the girl with the boyfriend. So you the always corner. had a boyfriend through high school. One All boyfriend? through high school, yeah. Same boyfriend. Yeah, his name was Nick, and he um, unfortunately passed away drinking and driving uh, two years into college. So, oh wow! Yeah. Were you and, guys still together in college? Uh, semi, yeah. semi together, and uh, it's very sad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because we didn't have Uber. Um, I graduated high school in 2013, and yeah. we didn't have Uber. I mean. Did we have Uber? I don't no, think we had so. Taxis. Yeah. So, and in San Diego, when you're going from downtown to uh, like the suburbs, it's a 30 minute drive, yeah. a 20 minute drive. So, yeah, it I, was terrible. I don't know if you noticed this. I got you a Chargers helmet. You got me a Chargers? You know what? I used to love the Chargers, and then I burned my jersey because they left us. Oh, did they? Yeah. And Junior Seah, is that Junior? Was yeah. he, was uh -huh. he was a linebacker for the Chargers. Yeah. yeah. He, his daughter played um, soccer with me when yeah. I was a little girl. And you would come to all the games. Um, so that's very sad, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, this, this is, <laughs> so let's this, go lighthearted this, now. This is I'm a, wearing this is black. A... I'm wearing black, and now we're talking about deaths. This is very much, um, you know, apropos of my personality. I'm not <laughs> let's talk about light, lighthearted stuff. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So you, you went to, you told me LMU last night, and I was like, you went to Loyola Marymount. Yeah. I have family members that went there. So can you just. Catholic. Describe? Yeah. Christian, just all that jazz. I actually don't want to touch on that too much because I will never talk about religion. Okay. Don't get me on a podcast talking about religion. I would love for you to talk about <laughs> that. <sighs> but you, you it gives people hope. And I think that that's beautiful. And I think people need help sometimes in their life, especially when they're going through tragedy. And I'm all for it. But when you become an, a religious extremist and you start pushing your views, like what this country was formed on was Puritanism. And I, people are like, oh, we left because of like taxes or whatever. Like, no, you got kicked out of your country because, you know, you were pushing your religious agenda on people. And then here you are. That's my opinion. Mm. I don't know if that's facts. Well, <laughs> well so th there were several different colonies. So you're right. There yeah. were some people that were Quakers and some people who yeah. were Protestants and some people who were different, you know, stuff like that. And there were, there were also Catholics that came over here. And there were yeah. some people, uh, the idea of being agnostic or an atheist was, was mm -hmm. not something, it was not encouraged here but it wasn't frowned upon either because yeah. that's what the first amendment was basically the first amendment the whole reason we left was because we had a, a dictator who basically said whatever we want to happen yeah. you don't get to you you weren't represented by us and we got to a, a we got to a point where they had we there were so many people living in the colonies that when it, it's really funny when we talk about the revolutionary war i want you to consider being a british soldier being shipped across the sea. I think yeah. it was a six week journey and a lot of them would die on the way over mm -hmm. because of scurvy or the shipwrecks or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you come and you're on away territory. You're like a month and a half away from your family <laughs> at, at, with a country with like three or four million people and they're all out there to kill you. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying the Revolutionary War wasn't hard. I'm just saying <laughs> that like, just imagine how hard it was for the British when they got their ass kicked. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, we end up winning our independence from them, but that's essentially mm -hmm. what happened. And then. A lot of people don't realize, I, I didn't think we'd be talking about this, but this is the oldest government in history. Like we, after, after our, we won our independence mm -hmm. because of our branches of government that we have and our checks and balances, every other government in the world since 1776 has fallen except ours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I need to talk into the microphone. There we go. For sure. For sure. But you, but you were saying before, you, you, you do have, this one interesting, you go to a Catholic school and get a degree in biology. And I'm, I'm curious, yes, sir. I'm curious about that dichotomy because didn't the Pope change his views on, on evolution like yeah. it, recently? I, I like to be, you know, the one that's doing, going against the grain. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I was never for, you know, never mind. I'm not going to talk about religion. Um, yeah. I'm more of a, you know, into the, I would never say like I'm into like the science revolution. Okay. You know, but then again, like, you know, there, I don't know. I, I don't have the answers to the world. Um, but I would say that, you know, like I said, it's good to believe in something and then, also, there's science. Yeah, <laughs> and I and I just stick with science, um, and especially when it pertains to biology, when it pertains to relationships. We were talking about this last night. Yes, how um, we were talking about marriage and love, and you know, love is an emotion, mm -hmm. and you can't rationalize. You can. You love. might not. You might not be accurate. You cannot rationalize love. Sure, you can. No, because people have written poems and books and Shakespeare's, and everyone's trying to get to what is love and what does it mean and all this stuff and you know, I think that the beauty of it is that you really don't know what it is. And there's like depths that you could reach as a human being that you never 
you know, those are two separate things. I, yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree that there are depths that you can't reach, but yeah. you do. We do know what it you is. You want to reach. We do know what it is. You can. There's there's neurochemical responses that we can show. For instance, if yeah. I showed these people in love and I were to measure their brains, we're going to yeah. see similarities. We can see. The thing about William Shakespeare is he did not have the advent of PET scans. He did not understand <laughs> yeah. the fucking human genome. So of course he didn't. Roma understand. He's a romantic. Right. I like. I'm a romantic. Okay. I, th I think but what I'm saying is you can be a romantic and still rec recognize that love is an evolutionary response. Like yeah, both of those things are true. Like yeah. there is a hard, a very cold calculated thing where it's like, what is love? Well, it's a dopamine flush that happens in, in your brain that happens mm -hmm. because you, when you have children, can you imagine like ch childbirth is hard. I've never been, you know, I've never gone through childbirth, but everyone I've talked to says it's fucking hard. It is not yeah. a pleasant experience. Yeah. So of course the human brain would then reward you with something by saying, okay, you've just had this horribly painful experience. Here's this child. And now you're going to feel this flood, this flood of emotion, mm -hmm. this rush of emotion and this attachment to this child, like nothing else you've ever experienced in your entire life. Of course, because if you didn't feel that, then the, then the species would have died off. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The oxytocin. That's not romantic, but it's still true, right? I think it's romantic. Well, I mean, we're biological robots. We're hairless murder <laughs> Yeah. Birth of a child. Yeah. I'm just saying it's rough, like, obviously, but it, it, there's, eight, there's eight billion of us almost, so we, we, it worked. Yeah. Whatever we did worked. You yeah, see what I'm saying? I agree. Uh, San Diego, did you leave? Leo <laughs> Mario Mountains in San Illinois? San Diego. Whale's Vagina, right? Whale's That's, Vagina. Yeah. Well, what is the, uh, In Command is one of my favorite movies. What is the, he's like, you dirty pirate hooker. Yeah. Or, oh, there's so many quotes. I and, so I, and then they just come to me and people are like, what did you just say? I'm like, so you haven't seen Anchorman? And they're like, no, I haven't. <laughs> You're weird. <laughs> I have several leather bound books. Yeah, I have, um, oh my God, I this love that one. Of, this table is made of mahogany. <laughs> yeah, rich mahogany. Mahogany. And uh, leather bound books. <laughs> yes. yes, go fuck yourself, San yeah. Diego. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. That's uh, <laughs> It's funny that you say that because a friend of yours said that on stage at Zoot the other night. Oh, really? Yeah, Dead Mouse. He was up on stage and he goes, go fuck yourself, San Diego, oh, no. at the very end of the show. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah? No. No, we're not talking about him? <laughs> I don't, uh, you, I can't, no, I can't, I can't legal, legal reasons. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. He's actually, um, I actually really like him yeah? as a person. I think he's really, 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 really intelligent and really talented. Um, but he, you know, he's, he's not particularly the nicest person I've ever met. Um, but then again, he never said he was. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we just weren't a match at all. I mean, you know, he's a DJ and that's his thing, but yeah. I don't want to say anything other than No, that's that. fine. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, find I, I, I think he's like, people really give him shit and I think he's just himself and he, he's like, no, I'm an asshole and I'm going to tell you, yeah. <laughs> you know, on Twitter or whatever. And I, I don't know. I don't know him too well, but um, well enough to comment. So. <laughs> I, I think it's very interesting that he recognizes that he got very popular about 10 years ago, a little yeah. more 10 years ago. And he, not resents, but there's this weird sort of antipathy he has towards his own music. And it's yeah. very obvious because he show every I've you know I've watched him perform I've lived in Vegas I've watched him perform at least forty times. Oh yeah. And he does these weird hand gestures whenever he's playing you know Ghost and stuff or, yeah. or whenever he's playing uh, you know uh, Sophie needs a ladder and yeah. he it, he plays these he does these things where he's like you know jerking off to his own music and like yeah. and I always thought that was interesting. I, the other thing is and I I tell myself this story I don't know if this story is true and if Joel is ever watching this I wonder if he could confirm <laughs> it. But the first time he played at Hakkasan we all went there it was back in 2013. And at the end of his set, he, it, yes, at the end of his set, he plays, uh, he plays uh, this song by Dr. P called Tetris. And it's just this violent fucking dubstep track and a, and a mosh pit like breaks out on the dance floor in front of the DJ booth. And I know because I started the mosh pit and then afterwards he never played there again. And I always wondered if they just fired him for playing fucking dubstep because back then people, there was this and there, there was a lot of clubs that were like, you do not play trap mu music or dubstep in here. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered if that was uh, if that's exactly what happened. But that was one of yeah. the most fun nights of my life. <laughs> I ate the last that night. That's awesome. Yeah. No, he. Yeah. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even say that he's an asshole. I would say that he's really. He's really was really nice to me. Genuine. He was a genuine, authentic person. I think that. Um, and he was really. He was really kind and sweet. I, I wouldn't say anything mean about him. And we just, you know, it was what it was. It was short and sweet. And he was really kind. You know, we went out to. Um, we went to Toronto and then we went to, he'd started his tour. We went to uh, 
Philadelphia. And it, like, I got to see like all behind the scenes and like him putting like his hat on him. Just like it, I felt like really, I don't know. You just like don't really get to experience that every day. And I was just, so I was honored to do that. And then we went to Miami and then it just, you know, went our separate ways. But yeah, that's all I'll say. Yeah. He's very intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Like a music master. Yeah. Yeah. Thinks a lot. Maybe thinks too much inside. Or it gets like maybe that's dark. What, may, maybe that's what the, <laughs> maybe that's what the helmet's for, right? Yeah, you, maybe it is. You know, just so like you can just focus on the music aspect instead of like the presentation. You could be like, this is this is why I'm here. Yeah. I'm here to create music and not just be like this. You know, well, I, I I appreciated him. Well, two reasons. One, because I love bass music, and he, yeah. he played some dubstep and uh, stuff like that. But the uh, the other reason why I liked him so much was because I felt EDM took itself way too fucking seriously. <laughs> like when I li- like I listen, I like Calvin Harris and Tiesto, but I feel like their audience it mm-hmm. takes themselves. They're way- like high college kids. Yeah, but but I f- it's it's like. The, it's it's the most elitist, bougie fucking yeah. crowd I've ever been around. And yeah. Dead Mouse and Skrillex did not take them. It's Marshmallow to a certain extent. They didn't take themselves as seriously, which I really appreciated and I enjoyed that. And the other thing was that I did feel like there was almost like this elitism where it's house music versus bass music. And and I always I was like I grew up listening to rap music. That's why I love I love uh, yeah. I love trap and dubstep so much. Oh, I love and, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, what? I don't know if I can see this. I'm sure you can. <laughs> we'll cut it out. So can. I know this guy. His name's Damon. I don't know. Can I see this? He's sure. the he's the owner of Sanctum, which is a sex cult club. Okay. And um, do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe. Go ahead. I, I want to hear more. <laughs> okay. And he's like friends with a bunch of people. He's like the most interesting person I've ever met in my life. Okay. Just like talking to him. Um, and he's like, oh yeah, I got Snoop Dogg's number. You got Snoop Dogg's number. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. But I've never, I've never met Snoop Dogg. I've never been with Snoop Dogg. Yeah. I wouldn't. He's yeah. like, it's weird. That's weird. Why? You know. Cool. He's like, what? I don't date like older guys. Okay. So like, it's like I don't know. It's... I like how we're whispering. I like because I have... feel like I I'm gonna got... say something that's gonna. No, let it's me fine. Know. We, we, we went. <laughs> hey, George, we went and bought the $800 microphone so people could whisper into them. I, okay. I like ASMR. to whisper. I whisper in people's ears. I li- yes, <laughs> I, I'm aware. Yes. Just whisper directly into the directly into the microphone. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's all I'll say about that. Okay, perfect. So we're yeah. we're in a situation <laughs> where uh, uh, you, you're you know you you have a fiance. Mm-hmm. Where did you where did you meet? Because I'm I'm sure, so there's a couple things. Oh, that... so I met through my best friend. Okay. She was also Playboy Play Me. Her name's Chelsea Pereira. I hello Chelsea. Um. So yeah, we met. Uh, the night that I met my fian- ex fiance um, was 2018, and he was like, I didn't know who he was. I never met him in my life. Um, uh, my best friend was saying like, Oh, there's a guy coming, and he's gonna rent a, he's gonna rent a Lamborghini and take us to uh, Mastro- uh, Mastros, yeah, Mastros mm-hmm. in uh, Malibu, Malibu yes. yeah. And I was like, I don't give a fuck about a guy like coming here. This is the girls' weekend, and I just moved back to San Diego from LA. And I was coming up to see all the like all my friends and um By the way, like, if, if you're if your dude takes you to Mastros in Malibu, he is cheating on you by definition. <laughs> Go ahead. So yeah, so um we were all uh at Mastros in uh, Malibu and I just didn't like him off the bat. I actually hated him. I was like he's he was so just arrogant and I just I hated that. Like I was like, oh God. First of all, I didn't want him to be there, and second of all, he was arrogant. And so we go to, get to Mastro's, and unfortunately, I was sat right, like, he sat right next to me, and um, we started talking, and he was like, yeah, I'm in real estate. I'm like, oh, my family's in real estate, and I'm just getting in, like, I just, like, you know, got my broker's license, and then, um, yeah, it was just kind of like tunnel vision, and we just talked the whole time, and it was like, wow. Like, I went from hating this person to being like, I can ever not, never I can not not see this person for the rest of my life and it was like was when it one it's, night? It's, was it the it was, first time it was the fir- there is this feeling and I can't describe it but it's almost like when you know you know and I knew immediately that I wanted to spend the rest of it wasn't that night but then it was that night and then we went from that night to spending the night together and then we had booked a trip to 
uh, Maui for a week, whole trip. Like, what is that quote from Jack Nicholson? He's like, go on vacation with a girl, and if you come back, marry her. Like, if you mm -hmm. love her before. And that whole trip was absolutely amazing. We went hang gliding, deep water diving, and it was just, and then from there, we went to the Hamptons and met all of his best friends, and it was amazing. And it was kind of like a whirlwind, you know, situation and a relationship, and it just went really fast. And like I said, when you know, you know. Mm. You can't really describe it, you just know. Sure. And as fast as it went up, it's fast as it went down. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. That's a common <laughs> theme on the show, actually. That happens pretty often. Well, a lot of girls talk about that. Kidding, I was kidding, Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so I think I want to point out one thing because I have this discussion with guys a lot. A woman introduced you to the guy you ended <clears> up <throat> getting engaged to. My best friend. My best, best friend, friend but, in but the, the way, whole world, but, Chelsea. But, you, but how did your best friend know this guy? Oh, so she went to a charity event for dogs at Surf Lodge. Wait, one more time. Let's reiterate what she just said here. So two <laughs> playmates. One of them went to a charity event for surf dogs. Yeah. Met a guy. <laughs> surf Lodge. Surf, surf Lodge. And then... And then introduce that guy to another girl who he ended up getting engaged to. I just like to point that out that I was yeah. right again. I just point like to point that out. If you are not have not joined Men of Action, you're a fucking idiot. All well, right. So, well, Michael, you're always right. No, no, that's not true. <laughs> but in this case, I was absolutely one hundred percent correct. I, um, so let's. So we have that whole situation. Uh, can you talk about this? I don't need specifics, obviously, because what we talked about before. Uh -huh. But there's a lot of girls who probably look up to you, right? And they're like, oh man, if if Elizabeth Chevalier can get into a relationship and it doesn't work out, like what, like Beyonce got cheated on, right? Yeah. Uh, when Beyonce got cheated on, do you understand how many women's world crumbled when they saw that? Because they're like, I thought if I was just good enough, guys would not cheat. And then mm -hmm. Beyonce got cheated on, right? And yeah. then all of a sudden that just like, that threw a lot of people mm -hmm. into chaos when they saw that because they're like, well, if Beyonce got cheated on, that means men just cheat because they just cheat, right? It, it really, it, it allowed for some very uncomfortable narratives to be brought uh -huh. forth, right? And then the other thing was like, um, you know, Melinda Gates leaving Bill Gates. Well, okay, so you, there's no level of richness where they won't leave you, right? Mm -hmm. And there's no level of physical attractiveness that won't leave you. Uh -huh. And then Johnny Depp is getting punched by his <laughs> wife and then she shits in the bed. So there's no level of like fame or stardom that will save you, like no matter what you do. There's a, there seems to be some way that the relationship can end badly. So but my question is, in your situation, can you point out for someone who maybe looks up to you, what were the red flags you missed that you, if you went back and you could talk to yourself, be like, pay more attention to oh. this. Oh, I know this already. I already thought about it. Yeah. Um, the first thing is emotional and mental stability. Okay. Not like... Yours I mean, or his? His. His. I think it's the sexiest thing to be emotionally stable. And by that, I mean... Someone who doesn't get erratic or do something crazy like and go off and just like reacts to things really impulsively, you know? Cause then you would take that and just be like, well, if he's doing this now, then yeah. I can't imagine being married to him or, you know. Um, another thing is authenticity. Mm. Someone who's authentic, lead themselves. Cause people would say someone who's not insecure, I'm like, well, everyone is a bit insecure in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. It's a point of your life. You're going to be insecure, whether it's you're getting older or you get sick or something. It's, it's, it's unrealistic to um, be like, they can't be insecure. Authenticity. If you're authentically yourself, then you will be very sure, sure of yourself, and then nothing can touch you. And I think that that's something that's, you know, it takes a while for people to get to that point in their life, and maybe it's you know, at a young age, they might get there because through wisdom and like going through a lot of life experience at a young age, um, traumatic or not, um, can bring wisdom. And I think wisdom would be another thing in a relationship. Find someone who's at your level of, you know, uh, just like un perceiving maturity. maturity. Yeah, is very important. And I think also when you're at a place of like just being authentically yourself and you're just very sure of yourself, you attract people that are, you know, at the same level in sure. some respects, not all, but you know, um, I definitely think that just being a stable, a sure of yourself person, the rest of it, I think is just kind of fluff. Obviously if you're an authentic person and you really truly love yourself and believe in yourself, then you will not cheat. 
if you if you really are you're if you really are sure of yourself and you're like i am this person i am very stable emotionally and i know who i am and no one can take that away from me then it's hard for you to cheat because you're like why would i do that like i'm so centered you know that i wouldn't go out there and i wouldn't look for other things and other people because yeah, i have it all inside wouldn't, of myself wouldn't, wouldn't that hold on but so yeah. so here's the the thing why I, I may i may disagree here men cheat and women cheat for diametrically different reasons i think that if a person cheats then they obviously there's the are function, hold on, there's the function of lying and then there's the function of sexual intercourse uh, those, are two, those are two different things lying is the weakest thing you can of course, do as a I, human I, agreed but but my point is like men's desire to have sex with random women is 100,000 times more than women's desire to have sex with random dudes that's true so then i think that there's also the discussion that's, that's of biology and right, that you but, shouldn't be in a but, but that's not a function <laughs> that's not a function of insecurity though like yeah. I, like a, a man cheating okay so there's three different things a man wanting to have sex with another woman a man actually cheating mm -hmm. that's that's different and then a man lying like those are those are well i mean i guess uh, the combination of the two would be the cheating yeah. but the, the point is uh when you know I, I bring this study up this is probably the 10th time i brought this study up which was the idea that when women cheat in a relationship they report lower satisfaction in the marriage and when men cheat in a relationship they report the same satisfaction in the marriage when men cheat is not to end the relationship when women cheat it is to end the relationship about 80 percent of the time that's what the stat that's what the science shows mm -hmm. us and so it's very different when men cheat and when women i'm not saying that the cheating, there's two functions. There's yeah. the lying and there's the intercourse. The lying, I, do, I agree with you. That is yeah. pretty low status. That's pretty beta. The the actual <laughs> desire to have sexual intercourse with another woman is extremely natural. Like it's 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 actually shocking when you don't see it. Mm -hmm. that, that That's the way it is. And one of the things is, uh, Elizabeth, uh, in order for a man to get in front of you, like to go to, do you know how many dudes watching this who have never been to fucking Masters in Malibu? It's a waiting list and it's pretty expensive to eat there. Yeah. So, um, those guys don't know. They haven't been there. They don't get in front of you. Like you and I, when we hang out at those, these parties, we go to influencer parties, those dudes are not there. Listen, I think that if you're dating someone, if you're looking at life that way, then you're looking at all all wrong. Don't look at people for just the surface level. Like, obviously, it's human wouldn't, nature. Wouldn't it be great if we did that? But that, yeah. there wouldn't be Instagram. I am not. But there wouldn't my, be Instagram. I am not my Instagram. I agree I am you. the complete opposite. I'm a very quiet person. I read books mm -hmm. and I stay inside. I don't go out and... And you look at my Instagram, you would think the complete opposite. And so honestly, like me being on this podcast is almost doing me a justice because, um, you know, how people perceive me. I already know how they perceive me. And that's why I don't even I don't even try to sway their opinion because I'm like, you know what? They already are going to think this way of me. And so it's kind of it's very hard. You know, it might be hard for the guy that, like, you know, can't go to Masters, but it's a, it's very, but I did it to myself. So I take full responsibility. We're talking about your relationship. No, just for putting myself out there and just being this, you know, version. Okay. So, so number one, people yeah. are shallow. Number two, you are very interesting. I talked to you last night. <laughs> I know you, you may seem like a little, like you're having a little, you know, introversion I'm here. But very you, shy. Yeah, exactly. Very you're very shy. shy. But, but number three, their opinion, like you, sh you deserve to express yourself. Mm -hmm. Their opinions of you don't matter because they don't change. Again, mm -hmm. man, one of the things I learned running this business and then saying really to some people, offensive things on social media. Mm -hmm. If you guys go back and watch my clips on IG, I get a bunch of haters on there. One of the things I found is that like your hate does not affect my dating life, my personal mental health, or it doesn't affect the bottom line of my company. And so because of that, you don't get to, you don't get a place in my psyche. Does that make sense? So, so what I'm saying is you deserve to express yourself, whatever it is, whatever your views are. And if they don't like it, Fuck them. They don't matter. Yeah. Like Liz, that's what I'm saying. Like that's why yeah. they, they don't mean anything at all. So that's why when you're like, I'm afraid because when I express myself with this like playboy playmate character mm -hmm. and that that one gets rejected, then it doesn't matter. Then it's not authentically me. Let the authentic you come out. Fuck them if they reject. I know. You. It's they, just it's. I, I think it's also just very exhausting having to. Um, but again, but you have to do it. But anyway. again, I I did it to myself, so I take full responsibility. People are like, oh boo hoo, you're the one that did that to yourself. You know what? I did do it to myself, and I do regret it. And so I take full responsibility what, what for do you tell, it. What, what, which part do you regret? Do you posing nude? I regret, no, I never posed nude. I oh, only okay. posed topless. Okay. But I regret just putting myself, not while pl putting myself out there being um, on Playboy or Effigy or Maxim, not also vlogging or something so people could see this other oh, side Oh, you, re you regret me. not showing the other side. Got yeah, it. Okay. because now people are like, oh, she's just this. I mean, they could... That's human nature. People are going to think that you're that kind of girl because that's just human nature. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the most open-minded person or the most 
tunnel vision kind of person. It's just human nature and that's fine and I accept yes. that. So when I go and I meet people, they're like, I didn't expect you to be like this. Mm. And, I, and then some people, they just, they just can't shake this vision or this you know, idea of the, you know, that they have in their head, so they just won't get to know me. Yeah. And that hurts my soul. Well, they don't so. want, they don't get to, so a lot of people are addicted to their narrative. If you were to go mm, to a, somebody, yes, if you were, yes, 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 if, yes. if you were to go to a Christian and disprove Jesus or go to a Muslim and disprove Muhammad or go to, you know, a Buddhist and disprove Buddha, if you were to, obviously there's no way to do this. Hypothetically, if you were to do it, that person isn't going to say thank you. They're going to try to kill you. That's what's going to happen. People <laughs> yeah. do not like when you disprove their narrative. Yeah. Flat earthers don't like it when I point out that you can see Flat the... Flat earthers. They don't like it when, when I point out that you can see the Southern Cross from Australia, South America, and South Africa. They don't like that because when you see, when you point that out, it shows that the earth is round. And they, it's never, hey, Michael, thank you for that observation. It's always, you're a terrible person. That's the, I get hundreds of messages. How on my dare you how dare go you, against How what dare I... you point out the fact that you can see the Southern Cross in the same direction in three different points in the southern hemisphere <laughs> oh because the earth's round so so when you when you say stuff like that people that's the thing if your narrative comes out like for instance we were talking about kennedy summers last night right kennedy summers the the last so the last like yeah. really truly playmate of the year yeah. was kennedy summers right and kennedy uh is now a medical doctor so so amazing. she is a medical amazing. she's and so the the problem is shout out to kennedy if you're watching this uh is that it's it's offensive to men that the woman that's that beautiful who lived that life and then mm -hmm. posed nude is now a medical doctor because yeah. that does not fit with their narrative. Mm -hmm. She needs to be simple and dumb, and yeah. because she's not, that makes them mad, and so yeah. they they would they might attack her for whatever reason, right? It's the same type of situation, like um, you know, uh, uh, Jamie Villamore who's coming on um, in a couple of days. She is uh, she's got a master's degree, and she makes her her living from being a professional shooter. Oh, and wow. she's an FHM cover model. Those things are not congruent to some men. They're just like, no, women need to be put in this one category. Same mm -hmm. thing with me. Because I throw bikini competitions, <laughs> there's no way that I minored in astrophysics. But I did. And yeah. so that doesn't fit with your narrative. Yeah. I need to be a dumb, lecherous dude who like tries to exploit women. There's no other way for you to fit m who, what I am in your... Dude, I went, to, I went to a fucking club the other night. And one of the hosts was like, so what do you do, Michael? And I was like, I host uh, you know, some bikini competitions and I host a... I work as a quantitative analyst and then I have a... Her coaching program. He goes, no, 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 you're a pimp. I'm a pimp. What? He goes, no, no you're a pimp. Ew. I was like, bro. I was like, I, I, I hate, I hate yeah. most people. Yeah, but in fact, if you were to ask me, Elizabeth, like, no, I, I, de I genuinely hate most people. So that that's so. misanthropy. That's the term for that. Well, then that's my problem. Yeah, so it'd be mis <laughs> misandry is hating men. Mis misogyny is hating women. So I'm, I, so I'm literally both. the worst person ever. You're not the worst person ever. You're not even close to the worst person ever. Yes. That's such hyperbole. No. <laughs> ridiculous. All right, so but just going back to what you're saying before. So here's the other thing. Mm -hmm. Do you understand to some people you are offensive because you're attractive, not because you're sexual? Oh, is this like what you're asking? Yeah, no, what I was saying before, like you, when you you were saying before about, well, I didn't post this vlog because I didn't allow people to see a three-dimensional view of me. Mm -hmm. There's some guys who will come out here and you will literally describe quantum mechanics from start to finish and they will still call you stupid. They uh -huh. don't care because you're so attractive and so threatening. There's the, Whenever I hear men, this is one of the ones that drives me crazy. When they hit me up and they're like, Michael, what do you think about the lip injections and the plastic surgery? And I'm like, the only reason you as a man are bringing those things up is because, okay. it, it's, not, it's, okay. <laughs> it's because you know that woman would never date you. And in order to avoid the rejection, you point out plastic surgery or yeah. saying that the woman is fake or is only interested in looks, money, status mm -hmm. because she that woman is going to reject you and you know she is. So you protect yourself ahead of time yeah. by sitting there and calling her pejoratives, making, calling her yeah. names, calling her an Instagram thought or whatever. Yep. And so when she breaks that mold, then they get angry at me partially when, whenever I have a girl come on here and express some sort of intellectual viewpoint. Yeah. So the, the, And by the way, there are some girls who pose in Playboy who are dumb. There are some girls who pose in Playboy who are very fucking and smart like we talk about Kennedy yeah. Summers that it's not it's just it's a normal distribution yeah. no matter what but the point I'm trying to make is if they're gonna call you these names anyway Liz fuck them it doesn't right? matter if you yeah. have a vlog or don't have a vlog <laughs> that's my point exactly you yeah. doesn't matter how if you come on here and you start expressing here is what we're going to do to try to cure cancer and you start raising money for that and you do a fun run and every single part of your life is functionally perfect you are basically a state senator mm -hmm. but they're like well she posed in playboy and she has big fake boobs yeah. like they're, they're <laughs> always so what i said before is to some people, to yeah. some people, you are offensive because you're attractive, not because you're sexual. Yeah. You're offensive simply you being outside of three standard deviations of physical attractiveness yeah. makes some people offended just that you exist. Does that make sense? Good. I hope I offend them. There you go. Cool. But my, my point is, who cares what they? <laughs> my point is, who cares? Yeah, what they I, I just you're right. You're right. I, I, I guess like. 
I mean, I guess I just, yeah, it does suck, you know, mm -hmm. but you're, you're, you're spot on. <laughs> I just, you know, I just keep to myself, you know, because a lot of people, they just say things and, you know, I don't know. I just always like when I say stuff, I, I don't want to hurt people because you never know people's story. Um, so I'm always very like gentle when I'm like, yeah. like listening to people and I just take in kind of like just you know, read, I, I'm really like, I like to like watch people and like read them and be like, okay, just up and down. And usually it's not wrong. And I just think like, you know, it's good to be uh, kind to everybody. And if someone's an asshole, then, you know, if there's something inside of them that's hurting or they've been hurt when they were younger and no one reached in and was like, you know what, it's okay. You know, you can be, you can be a sensitive emotional person and not uh you know hurt other people because you've been hurt so, so that's how i feel so there's actual <laughs> science about yeah. around what you're saying so men tend to suffer from autism at a much greater rate than, yeah. than women and one of the functions of autism is the inability to read social <laughs> cues right so when you think about it from an evolutionary standpoint which gender would need to be better at pathfinding and which gender would need to be able to be able to be able to suss out authenticity yeah. as a woman a cave woman choosing a male partner uh -huh. is the most important decision of your life because if you pick the wrong one you and your child die mm -hmm. right and yeah. so the ability to read facial expressions or the ability to read cues evolutionarily would sit would fit more with women again this is a theory i know some people disagree with this but the idea that a woman would in general have higher intelligent or i'm sorry emotional quotient whereas men hi have higher uh, well i mean there's there's also studies that you know uh, go back and forth on that as far as uh, men having certain three-dimensional characteristics, being mm -hmm. able to fly airplanes or find directions mm -hmm. or stuff like that, and then women having higher EQ, there are studies that would that indicate that. But if that exists, if that mm -hmm. is true, then it's a function of evolution. Because again, yeah. me having sex with the wrong woman, there's very few penalties for that. Yeah. You having sex with the wrong man as a cave woman, not today. 50,000 years ago. He says I'm not a cave woman. But right. <laughs> Listen, you can- I very you, might you're, well be you're, you're a big, woman. You're bigger than most of my guy friends, so yeah. <gasps> Jeez, no, I mean, you're Michael. Taller, you're taller, you're taller than them. And then we'll cry now. Seriously? You're in like, I don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> so rude. It's I'm not just rude. kidding, happy birthday. I appreciate it. Oh, I can't drink on the- You can drink all you want. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, this is straight tequila. So. Is that it? Mm -hmm. It's a Blanco, yeah? I'm actually a 1942 or Reposado. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Yes. I, I'm indicating that you were tall, not that you're. Oh, yeah. I thought you were saying I was fat. No, you're not fat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fuck out, <man. laughs> All right. Anyway, um, uh, you made an interesting uh, convert. So we, we talked about this. Uh, you mentioned before about, you know, I'm sure you have some very attractive female friends who get put into toxic relationships. You got, you just said a few minutes ago, things like authenticity and wisdom that you're uh -huh. looking for a guy, but you must, would you at least admit or say that you have noticed that women will say they are attracted to one thing and then keep ending up in relationships with men who are not that thing? A hundred percent. Okay. Where do you think that disconnect come from, comes from? I think that women could be very intelligent and still pick the wrong partners okay. over and over again. Um, I think it comes from, uh, I think the first thing that any human should do is get their heart broken. I know that seems crazy. Whether it's through your parents or through a friend or through a partner, you need to go through that kind of just like breakdown of your personality so you can get to a deeper version of yourself. And then from there, you can go either on a self-pity journey or a self-love journey. And if you go on a self-love journey, then you kind of just find these parts of yourself where you're like, you know, this is what I like. This is this is how I want someone to treat me. And if you, you know, if you're like, this is how I expect people to treat me, and you won't expect anything less, then, you know, you will just be like, I'm sorry, this is gonna work. Next person. Um, but it's very hard to see that because like there are things like narcissism and stuff in this yes. world and people are really good manipulators um, of the human emotion. They've, they've mastered it because they've been hurt so bad so they know how to, what to say and how to act to get, the, get something they want out of a person. So, and especially in yeah. regards to, um, you know, relationships or like, how can I make this person feel comfortable? So they'll read you mm -hmm. and they'll find all the things that make you feel comfortable and loved. And then they'll take it all and they'll bring you up to that point and then they'll 
strip it away from you. I say fucking? Yeah, you say Fucking you. strip it away from you. And then you're like, oh, wow, I never saw that coming. Because you could have all this self-love and you're like, okay, I'm very sure of what I want and look for in a partner. And then you meet this narcissist. And usually I only learn from one, you know, where I'm like, this guy's too charismatic. There's something going on, you but know? You, but you, my point is you're still attracted to him, though. Yeah, you can be attracted to someone now. Would would I would I get into business no, with? Hold, hold, hold. Uh, I want you to think about all the dudes who are watching this who yeah. would love to date you, oh. <laughs> and you're telling me you're warning us about a dude, but you're oh. still attracted to him. Do you understand how that's confusing for you? Men to hear? I mean, you can you. I mean, it's it's biology. Okay. You can you can mate with anybody now. To marry them is a different thing. I've seen people married to narcissists before. I mean, that's well, before. then that's, you know, that's... um Because they they hold... See, here's the thing. They hold... I can't speak for everyone. I but, don't know. So you you, know. you're saying that you had a previous encounter with a narcissist. At what point does the honeymoon phase stop? Do you remember? Was it five months, six months, a year? Do you remember? It was a year. It was a year of yeah. that. Yeah. So a, year, a year of wearing a mask. Quite impressive, honestly. I was like, <laughs> well done. I, I, you know, I never saw it coming. And you never know. It could be one year. It could be five years. It could be a week. You just never know, you know, when they're t when they're exhausted of being this fake version. So like, I can take the mask off now. And then you're like, what the fuck? But, you know, what was your question again? You were asking no, me. So, so one of the problems that uh -huh. men in general have, and I'm, I'll just quote like the seduction community or the manosphere or whatever, is the idea that women who are really attractive, and I've seen this firsthand, will say mm -hmm. that they want this kindness and this wisdom and this gentleman nature, mm -hmm. and then they will date fucktards. <gasps> they will date the biggest, most loathsome, mm -hmm. the dudes I can't even fucking stand being around. And, and I'm just like, everything they say mm -hmm. tells me to be this way. And then everything they do tells me to do something else. Yeah. And do you understand as men, and there's a lot of men who follow you, uh, do you understand mm -hmm. as men, those men are fucking confused by what you say yeah. as opposed to what you do. When you say you are, I want a man who is mm -hmm. kind, and yet I would introduce you to a guy who works the fucking drive through at Jack in the Box who's super kind. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you, Liz would never cheat on you, but you're not interested in him. And that's why there's a dichotomy of these things that people say. When I hear women say, I'm not interested in dudes who are famous and have money, and then they're like, yes, but I fucked Chris Brown in fucking Cancun one time, or I, you know, I ended up dating you know, Machine Gun Kelly, mm -hmm. when I hear these things, it's mm -hmm. such a dichotomy when a woman tells me that she is attracted to one thing and yeah. then I and then we and then I ask for academic reasons, who'd you date, whatever. Or the other one that just mind blowing to me is when I hear constantly, I will not have sex with a dude on the first date. And then I ask them about every one of their exes mm -hmm. and without fail, they had <laughs> sex with every one of their exes on the first date. Yeah. So that, do you understand what I'm saying? How I am hearing one thing about what is being said and then the actions are different and it is confusing mm -hmm. to a lot of men, frustrating to a lot of men. I think the, the quote here goes back to uh, practice what you preach. I think that a lot of people will say one thing and do another and it's for sure but what but what do what do men do then do you understand what i'm saying what? i don't i don't know what all men do i'm not a man i wouldn't know but i would say that a man could just i mean what do they do how do they get how do they how do they square up this dichotomy i just brought point, pointed out to you where I go, they're literally talking to a, a female who says i am interested in a man for x y and z Right, and then they start dating the fucking rich dude who's on roids, who fucking treats them like shit. Well, like we watch them, and we're they're like, fucking we, themselves is what they're well, doing. Well, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah. One more time, what would the men do? Do you understand how how it's confusing oh, for them? Oh. Like, do they do they go with what they see a woman do, or do they listen to what a woman tells them that they're interested in? I think that yeah. when someone shows you who they are, believe them, and if someone's showing you. Um, you know, they want this or they're like, hey, babe, you know, I really would like you for you to be more affectionate or, you know, it's it, I've seen women actions, straight up yeah. tell a man, I want you to be more affectionate. Yeah. He gets more affectionate. And then she's like, why are you being needy? I have absolutely seen that. Well, happen. then those people need to go to therapy. Uh, but I, I I don't know when I'm like, you know, I want you to be affectionate. Um, then I that's genuinely what I mean. You know, I mean what I say. I don't know if that's the case for every girl. Um, you don't, but you have female friends, and you've seen this dichotomy of what I'm saying. A there, woman there is, has to be. I mean, here's the thing: the, it's the game of life. Everyone's you go around and you date a bunch of people, and that's the fun of dating. You go and you meet new people, and you see which, like, which matches and not. And then finally, you meet someone, and you'll say, "That's the one." And you don't know why, and there's no, there's no scientific reason. You just are like, "That's the one." 
And that's how I felt once time in my life with my ex-fiance and it didn't work, but I know I'll feel that again. And it's just like, when you know, you know. And if people who are in love or have been in love and have been divorced, they would say, I just knew. I just knew that was the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. Now, there could be like, you know, there's, here, here's the thing. If you really knew the answers to dating and everything and all of that, people would have it figured out. The whole fun of it, the whole fun of life is dating and going through this stuff and going through pain and going through suffering, and going through happiness and falling in and out of love and having heartbreak. And I think that just enjoy your life. Don't think so hard about it. If you let it go, it will come. I swear to God. When I focus so hard on finding a guy, it doesn't happen for me. It's like it's like a shit. You can't force it. You know, like you need to, you need to just relax and and love yourself. And people will be like, oh my God, this person loves themselves. I want to be around this person. I want to I want to date this person. Now that's just I think it's just how it works. That's how energy works. It's just like you know, it's like comes and you know what I'm saying um for men I would say love yourself be interesting you know people be like wow I found this person so interesting don't go around dating girls who are gonna break your heart and then you're like god damn it I'm such a good guy you know my my brother is the best man I know and he is with a girl that loves him. Mm -hmm. You know why he found her? Because he loved himself and he knew who he was. And my mom raised him that way. And even if you don't have a mom that's like that, find it, like go in and look inside and be like, you know what? I'm going to make do things that make me happy. And slowly and surely you will do it every day and every month and every year. You'll, you'll find those ways to bring love to yourself. And then you'll just attract, you'll attract people when you are in a lack mindset, is that what it's called? Uh, a scarcity mindset. Scarcity mindset. Then you're going to, people are going to be like, ew, gross. This person's so, you know, even just energetically. God. Uh, no, I, I, I understand in a vacuum what you're saying. Yeah. Empirically, that is not how the world works, though. Mm -mm -mm. You see shitty people dating the most one. Dude, I meet girls all the time and they're like, they settle down with dudes. And these girls are like, you know, run their own business, fucking in the gym six days a week. Everything about they've never cheated on their boyfriend, and they're dating a dude with a 500 body count who like treats them like trash. And you and you're just like, wait, what about the energy thing, the karma shit that I was hearing about before? <laughs> None of it turns out to be true when you look at it in, in practice. This world yeah. is full of fucking chaos. I, I think that love is softness. It's kindness. Look at look at what love means. Okay, love love is kind. Love is sweet. Love is careful. Love is true. Are you going to be in a relationship with no love? Look for that. Of course, of course, of course you can yeah. be in a relationship with love. But what I'm saying is the, these things are temporary and they're based on like, uh, they're based on neurochemical, your emotions, no matter what you think yeah. about it, and no matter how deep, deep they are, or how inexplicable they feel to you, they are neurochemical responses. I know, but if you really l fucking love someone, you will never fucking cheat on them and you will never disrespect them and you will never go behind their back. You won't. Okay, two different I know, things. Two I know different people. Things. Having sex with other people and lying to them are uh, two different things. Well, you know, I agree with you. You should not lie to someone. Lie, you're lying to yourself if you cheat. You're lying to yourself. Agreed. So for sure. Uh, I don't. I don't know all the answers, but if I mean, no guys watch this podcast, so I would just say, love yourself. Love yourself so much that it's just. And I know. And you know what's like fucked up. And I'll say this about society. I've noticed that men aren't really like taught to like be. I don't know if it's true, but I've. I. I would. This is my opinion. So don't come for me. Men aren't really taught to be these emotional beings. You know, they're supposed to be strong and, you know, uh, you know. I, you can, by the way, you can come for me if you want. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you that I believe what she's saying is true up until about the 1970s. Yeah. Now there is a very, very strong push for men to express themselves and yeah. to not be masculine. I, I, dis, I, I think for the most part what you're yeah. saying, but when we're talking about a Clint Eastwood character versus a Machine yeah. Gun Kelly character, you can't tell me men are not taught to express themselves no, no, when, are, when, right. when Megan so. Fox is dating a man who wears a pink dress. That is not, no. Men are expressing the fuck out of themselves. Maybe yeah. too much when Takashi 6 ix is snitching to the feds and painting his hair pink. Yeah. There's way too. I think men are expressing themselves plenty. That's not the yeah. issue. I think they. I think that the issue is again. It goes back to the dichotomy. Uh -huh. There's these feelings of what I say I want. And by the way, men are also problem that problematic. They have the same issue. They're like, oh, I have standards for myself, and then you're just simping over a girl. Mm -hmm. the, the men have the same issue. But in the case with with females, it's a it's a deal where you consistently, as a guy, 
will talk to a woman and she'll say, I'm interested in this with the exception, with certain exceptions. Like I don't, one of the th reasons why CJ Sparks is one of my best friends is because I never have this issue with her. She says she likes a thing and then she ends up liking that thing. Um, and, and so I, that's, I think that dichotomy is frustrating to a lot of men. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, are, you getting, are, are we doing a makeup Sorry. break? No, that's no, fine. I was putting eye drops in my eyes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah, it's really dry. That's the thing. For the If you guys haven't been to Vegas in a long time, that first night you spend here, you're going to wake up and every part of your body is just like like super, super dry. There we go. No, dude, keep put the eye drops in. It's fine. Film it. It's not, There's nothing wrong with this. Uh, you know, come over here. <laughs> it's fine. It's like I'm like, I'm dying inside. It's like they sucked the water out of me. This is the moment I landed in Vegas. Yes. I'm like, ugh. It's like Spongebob. You know that Spongebob yeah. episode where he's like, <laughs> it's all like dry as a dry sponge. That's like, I woke up this morning. I'm like, I feel like Spongebob. Yeah. <laughs> that one episode. Water. <laughs> um, but you said it takes two weeks to like, you know. Not two weeks, but like at least one week. I remember the first week I was here in 07. I was dry as shit. I remember like itching like all the fucking time. All right. So let me ask you another thing. Okay. okay. You brought up uh, at dinner last night about... Uh, we were talking about Gator. Do you remember this? Ooh, I love this topic. Go ahead. What, so I, I think I, I think, love this topic. I meet I meet some women <laughs> who are. And by the way, I, there's no. I have clients that are, are homosexual. I have some close friends that are homosexual. This is not a function. There's not a judgment on somebody being gay. Yeah. This is a judgment on when a man is purporting to not be gay and actually is, and women being very confused by his behavior and. And, and getting signs that he is one way when he's another way. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you had an opinion on this. What was it? Uh, I think they're called like men in the closet or like, you okay. know, or like there's a term for it. I was watching TikToks and I was like, I watched this one video. I think I watched it too many times because I was like, oh my God. And then there was another video of another girl that was like saying the same things. And I was like, oh shit, what this were those is a things? thing. Well, the first thing is just picking apart your appearance. Now, I understand men like, you know, skinny, not too skinny, like fit. You're tight. talking about a guy that you might be seeing yeah. who's picking apart your appearance and you think that he may be closeted. No, no, I'll tell okay. you why specifically. I don't really like the shape of your nails. Can you change it to pink? I've dated people who like, they're like, you know, and then they would go shopping for me. And get clothes for me because they wanted me to wear these specific clothes because you know, they to, like the colors. Sorry, I hate to interrupt you, but do you remember what I just said in my last, the last thing I brought up? What? You are telling me you want a man who is kind and wise, and then you're telling me that you're dating a dude no, who picks you apart. No, this is different. This but is you, not oh. nice picking me apart. This is like, ugh, gosh, if you could just like, you know, get rid of those split ends or like, you know, like, could you fix this? Because it's really just unbecoming. Like, I have dated guys that have been like, very like feminine about like just they're like yeah but you but the problem is that's the not kind liz, that's not the problem kind. is liz you dated them that's the that's what the problem that's oh making. oh everyone's, that's no everyone's i fucking you. brain is melting <laughs> because of this point you're telling us that the, oh this no is the I, problem. I got and rid of him surely after that it's okay. not like i dated this guy this is a guy i went on a date with got it okay not someone i dated got it in fact he had fake teeth you know who you are <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. You know, I was like, Mom, I don't think they're fake teeth. They look like caps. He's like, he talks like this. Yeah. You know, like, you yeah. <laughs> he's got like a whistle. Oh, he, are you saying, <laughs> you're saying he doesn't have veneers. He actually has. No, that. he's got caps. And I was like, dude, because I was like, he was talking about my boobs. And I was like, what about your teeth? And like, you know, because I wouldn't say that. And that's so low. Like, yeah, but I that's, why he's, the oh, that's why he's <laughs> talking about your boobs, because he knows about his teeth. That's why he's saying it. Yeah, so I made it. I made it known. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> never mind. Has my this, mom, I, my mom. <laughs> has this has this th thing happened with other men, or is it just this one instance? That was once, but then I had saw like videos, and I was like, you know, he's very he's very feminine. Um, there's just certain things. Okay, here's another thing, like those that backdoor action. I don't know which which one. You know. Yes. What about that? I mean, it's more preferred. For Oh, you're, you're telling me that if you're dating a guy and he is in the closet, he prefers that more. No, no, I'm not saying that. I Because um, I because I have heard that from three I would other say, women. Yeah, I would say that he goes for that. Or, uh, oh, it's going to pay me instead of such a bad light. Playing around with their lower region. Got it. Okay, playing around with the, uh, the tongue. The gutter. Got it. The yeah. finger. Yeah. A probe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is so good. We have just broke terms of service. Electric on. shock collars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one got me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Pegging, negging. Okay. Those are two very, very different <laughs> things. Pegging and negging. I mean, we're pretty opposite sides of the body there. Um. Sorry, those are, I, I mean, but do you do you understand? Do you understand why this is confusing? Like you're sitting there complaining listen, about I am a, a guy compl- doing wait, this. Listen, there is complexities to personality. You can't just be one. You can't be a linear. You know. Okay. Uh, people are multifaceted individuals, and you know, I think that they enjoy certain things in the bedroom, and then uh, as opposed to relationships. Mm. So I would say that a, I've noticed that guys who are in power, they love to get fucking like just. Like, dominate it. Dominate me. The guy Choke saying dominate me. me. Yeah. Abuse me. So guys are asking you to dominate <laughs> them when those guys are in power. Mm-hmm. Got it. It's like they want to like, you know, feel like, because they're like, they're, everyone's around them is yes men and they're just like, tell me no. Yes, right there. Tell me no. Tell me I'm not good enough. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. I've... Um... I mean, this isn't my personal experience. No, this is not your fault. <laughs> you're, not, you're not snitching. On, she's not maybe. snitching on her own NDAs. Maybe no. yes, maybe no. Yeah. I don't know. I'll tell you what I've done. <laughs> I've actually had friends come into the the room when I'm doing like bench press max, and I and I have them all yell at me, telling me yeah. to go fuck myself. Yeah, and there's go no, fuck yourself. They're like, you, there's no way you can lift that, Michael. I tell them, like, go ahead. Reverse, and tell reverse psychology. Yeah, tell, oh yeah. I'm gonna do it ten times. Yeah, I tell them they're like they're like no, Michael, there's no way you can live that shit. Yeah, for sure. I've definitely done that before. All right, so here we go. Let's do. Let's talk about this. Um, You were talking about uh, we we got into the discussion of longevity, life longevity, and you said you don't want to live for a long time. I don't. I want to live here for a good time. You know, I want to live. You know, I wouldn't say that. Like, there's nothing to. I'm not trying to put anything into the universe, even if that's a true thing. Um, I just think that. I've lived so much life already. Um, it's a long topic of discussion, but um, I just, I've, I've had so many life experiences and I feel like I'm at the point where I've reached joy or I've, got, I've reached joy and then I've come back down and I've gone back up there again. But I feel like once you get to that point, um, which is joy, it's like the highest. For sure, uh, self-actualization. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I reached that after just going through a lot of traumatic things in my life. Um, I decided I'm not going to be the victim anymore. I am a survivor because when I was when I was a little girl, I was in the hospital for the first seven years of my life, and I think uh, it's a long story, but um, I barely made it. Uh, I had like literally 30 minutes left to live. This is a long story, so I'm not trying to like hold no, you guys here. Tell the whole story. Um, I had vovulus um, or recurrent vovulus. If you're a medical doctor, you know what that's like. They say that it's basically the equivalent pain is like going through childbirth every time you have a malrotation. So basically it's the narrowing of your small intestines twists and then untwist. And then at some point it turns into a knot. So something, nothing can go down or nothing can go out. And um, I was inpatient for seven years the first seven years of my life i didn't have a shot and i would walk around the hospital with a fucking pole to my arm and i was happy when someone brought me macaroni and cheese but the pain that i endured i only remember two times in the hospital those seven years when i got macaroni and cheese like from kfc i don't know it was something about it i just loved it and when i went to the painting room because they had a painting room um, and this hospital because I was in so much pain that they would let you paint to soothe yourself from the pain. Um, and then those are the only two times I remember. Um, at seven years old, I, uh, I gotten so sick that the pediatric GI surgeon uh, wanted to do emergency surgery on me. And he was like, all right, I'm going to come in. He came into the room. This is, oh, and this is like, <laughs> it's a long story. He came into the room um, and he was like to my mom, he's like, I have an infant I want to do surgery on um, first. And then I'm going to do your daughter because this is emergency surgery. They didn't know what was wrong with me. They had got, done scopes and everything. They had just misdiagnosed me. Um, and 
he came back into the room and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna do your daughter first. I'm gonna do her surgery first. He did the surgery, it was a nightmare. They took my appendix, half of my small intestines is removed. And then after the surgery, I was fine, I was great. You know, I was healed. Um, he came back into the room and he sat my mom, mom down and he was like, Diana, it was my mom's name, had I done the infant's do uh, surgery first, your daughter would have been dead in 30 minutes. And I didn't understand like the gravity of the situation like till, you know, probably like recently. Like I was just, I was just so embarrassed for so long because I had the scar in my stomach and I felt like no one would love me or, you know, <laughs> I had to get out of my shelf. Um, no one would love me or anything because I have a scar. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm just gonna, you know, work past it. And like, obviously modeling, like photoshops it out, but like, it was really hard. And I was just like, yeah. Do you guys have a tissue now? <laughs> yeah, I do. I want um, but yeah. So I just, I think that people don't understand like that, like every day you go and you like, Every day you like go and live your life, you live a nine to five, but you don't know what it's like living in a hospital every day and just doing that. It's crazy. Like, I think people are so worried about just fucking surface level shit, man. And I literally was living in a fucking hospital. And then I got sick again recently last year. I had like um, a complication. I had to get another surgery and Obviously, I had like re three reconstructive surgeries and now my stomach looks absolutely amazing. Thank God to the plastic surgeons of Beverly Hills. But I like literally, it, it's crazy. Like you just, health is so important. So basically, I live every day and I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here. I'm just happy to be here, you know? And I think like, it's so interesting like, just like listening to people and like, they're just so like obsessed and consumed with like everyday shit. And I'm like, dude, you could be in a fucking hospital bed, like walking around with a fucking stick tied to your arm, like not knowing, like, you know? So, yeah. You, you just become very grateful of things and people and experiences. So I think everyone should just be happy to be fucking alive. So, yeah. <laughs> That's if you were to ask me a question. Sorry to get emotional. I mean, you could cut it out if you Why want to. Why would I to. ever cut this out? <laughs> It's just, it's a very private thing. I don't think I'd ever, I've never talked about this ever in my life. Um, because I feel like people don't really fucking care. They only want to like, you know, they just don't. They're like, yeah, whatever. Don't really give a fuck. Um, but yeah, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm just going to give like a blurb of it, you know, out here. Hey, listen. Just listen, throw it out. See what people listen, say. Listen, listen. <laughs> um, some people yeah. are going to go with their narrative. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Some yeah. people, some people. <laughs> are going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. It's not, that's one of the things about misanthropy is yeah. that you think all humans are the same. They're not all the same. Yeah. There's gonna be some people excited that you're three dimensional. There's mm -hmm. gonna be, but here's the other part that I think you might be missing. There's a lot of girls out there who look up to you. Yeah. And you sitting there talking about- That are about, sick in the hospital or something? I mean, they could be sick yeah. in the hospital or they dated a narcissist <laughs> or they don't, they don't take their, they take their life for granted yeah. or they're stuck to their phone yeah. and they look up to you and uh -huh. so that was the reason why it was important for you to say this, regardless yeah. regardless of what fucking uh, some dude, you know, in the Middle East who calls you names, <laughs> yeah. who, who, doesn't, who doesn't fucking matter, or some dude in India who's like, let me see your bobs and vagina, yeah. right? They, they don't, that, that my point is, they don't matter. Like, yeah. I, I just, I'm just like, it doesn't you know, matter. My, my dad was killed by a drunk driver in 06. Yeah, and, I remember telling you and, that. And, and, when after I, the way he lived his life was yeah. like, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do all the time. Yeah. And I think that's probably the reason why I live in Las Vegas and why yeah. I host the podcast that I always yeah. wanted to host. Um, and that, you know, and I, and I, and I'm a, you know, I, I was a ring announcer for the first time this year. And that's yeah. been a dream of mine forever. Uh -huh. And I, and I did those things because I, I take like what you said, uh -huh. I, I could, I, I remember so I, I was on a date with this girl and she's like, what are your plans for the future? And I'm like, I can die tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. My plans for the future. Like yeah. I, I have a pretty fucking awesome business now. I could, <laughs> I rescued some animals. I'm going to fuck it. I could fucking die tomorrow. Yeah. So I think it's really important what you're saying. So mm -hmm. I think it's not important whether or not you think some people are not going to listen to this story mm -hmm. or your story because yeah. they don't matter. Yeah. Okay. And that, and like in the reason, and by the way, they'll comment in the, yeah. comment section on YouTube and I'll remind them you don't fucking matter. <laughs>
but there are some people who are going to look up to you. Yeah. I hope I hope that that does happen. I oh, I know it'll happen. I I know that there are people. Actually, I know for a fact that when I like when I was in the hospital last year, I had a surgery. I had a little tumor um, in my stomach. It was from that previous surgery when I was seven. It had grown, so they just removed it. It was benign, not cancerous, thank God. Um, but it was a really quick surgery, and I like didn't feel anything. While I was inpatient in the hospital, I was walking around, and I was like, some of these people are here for a long time and they're probably what do they do they go on youtube so you know or they're like you know what else can you do they're on they're on their tiktok they're on their youtube they're on their instagram um so you know there's always hope there's a hundred percent i was like i'll never be able to model because i have this scar mm. and it didn't matter and i and i always felt like you know uh, people are gonna judge me because of this scar. I have like a, I was like born with like a defect, and so I made it known that I was gonna be like I was gonna beat that. So I, it's almost like I went out of my way to get into Playboy and Max of an FHM. I was like, I'm going to fucking do this, whether it kills me. There is no other option. I was like, there is no other option. This is what I want. It's gonna happen, and that's how it happened. And you just have that kind of mindset when you've kind of like from the get-go you've just been like stripped of like something so you're just like you'll you'll have this like you know i don't know i can't describe it <laughs> where you're just like i'm just gonna do everything i ever wanted to do because you know i never know if i'll get another shot to do it again now who knows if we come back here you, you, know? you had an epiphany <laughs> yeah yeah you know, epiphany and you had a, a level of gratitude. Yeah, I am fucking grateful. I'm very great. I'm f grateful to be here right now. I'm grateful to celebrate your birthday. It's your birthday. We're going to, we're, um, I can't say we're dressed up as, but we're going to look fucking hot. And um, he's going to be like the head guy. I mean, like we legit have like fucking awesome costumes. I'm like, I'm like, damn, like girls were sending pictures of themselves in the group chat. I'm like, Oh yeah, we've got a fucking. So, so, so to, to, provide, to provide context, three of my close female friends are throwing. They start, I started the WhatsApp group. They got in the WhatsApp group. And yeah, then, yeah. And then I was asked to. I was asked to leave the WhatsApp group. Sexy, sexy. And so now there's fifty something girls in there that are that are planning my demise on tomorrow night. Um, can we can we talk about this? Uh, so yeah. you you had made a decision to want to get into Playboy and FHM. Yeah. Maxim. Um, during that decision, were there mentors that you had? Were there people that you looked up to that made you want to do that? Um, I don't know. I just like, I love the girls next door okay. when I was younger. So I was just like, oh my God, they look, I mean, obviously it's like has a traumatic stuff. I, I want to talk about light things now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just was like, I just love, I just love boobs. I like, I love, I think it's just a beautiful thing. I didn't have big boobs growing up. I was flat as hell, as A cup. And I was just like, I would just love some like, I just think it's so feminine. And I know like, obviously I have huge boobs, but uh, <laughs> you know, I know some girls um, that have like just small boobs and it's, I just think it's a, the most feminine thing. Um, and I just think that uh, Playboy is just very feminine. And I also think it's just kind of beautiful to express your sexuality, almost like exhibitionism, which I'm very into a little bit. <laughs> why is she looking at me i don't know why. um i just like i don't know i just think it's nice to express yourself and for sure um i think sexuality is the highest form i know it's kind of obviously frowned upon but i i don't know i just love i just love playboy i just love it even though it has the like cd past and stuff coming out um yeah but do i have any mentors um agents photographers like sure. yeah um the first time I shot for Playboy was in, like, God, I don't remember, but I was 19 or 18, 19. And it was at Playboy Enterprises of Beverly Hills. And the photographer was Josh Ryan. And this is like when Hef was still alive. So, or like right before he died. And uh, I did like full spread eagle shots naked but i looked like a baby and i was like and i was a baby <laughs> i was a baby doing like spread eagle shots and like everyone there was, was super comfortable um hair and makeup and then the studio it just felt like 
Playboy. And then the photographer like had sent me proofs of it. And I was like, I can't fucking do this. I'll do anything. I'll pay you. So I'm not on this magazine. So thankfully it wasn't on there. Um, but yeah. And then I went back in to do Playboy in 2017 and that's when, um, it was covered. So yeah. <laughs> you went back to do it again. I right. did, but yeah. it was it was not nude then. Got it. So and then it and then I did topless, and then they went back to being nude. So then I did topless. I remember that. Yeah. So yeah, I have topless shots if you want to go see nice boobs. <laughs> awesome, awesome, and yeah. I'm sure that a lot of people are pausing the fucking <laughs> video right now, yeah. and they have left the Michael Sartain <laughs> podcast. They have left. Um, so is there anything that triggers FOMO in you? Is there so, like for, for instance for yeah. me, um, I I was sure. always. I was always so uncomfortable taking my shirt off in public until yeah. maybe two years ago. Uh, and whenever I see guys that were super comfortable, even when they weren't in shape, mm -hmm. how comfortable they were just mm -hmm. walking around in like, you know, board shorts out on the yeah. beach. And I was so, I was always so jealous. I was always wear a t-shirt when I was out because I was so fucking, you know, uh, insecure about it. Um, and, and so that I would always have FOMO or I would have FOMO when I saw people who, um, it was never really the traveling, but there were certain things that I would see on social media that would give me FOMO. Was, yeah. Is there anything that does it for you? Uh, fuck. I would say, even though I'm like, it's such a long discussion, I get FOMO for people who are married and happy and have kids. That makes me sad. I wish I could have that. I don't know how to get it. I just like, I just do my thing and I'm happy. And if I, you know, I'm not on dating apps. I don't even really leave my place. I, I came here to Vegas because like, you know, obviously we're friends and we met like at, you know, Babes in Toyland. And I just... I rarely go out, so like it'd be kind of impossible for me to meet someone. So I need to definitely put myself out there and find someone. Um, but yeah, I just I definitely want to get married. I definitely want to have kids. I just it's really it's not really not up to me. I'm not it's not the cards. I don't know you know my path. I don't I don't have I can't force it. You cannot force it. If you force it, it'll end in fucking you know like when people force like marry me now and then he marries like God damn it. It's fucking here's a fucking ring and then Ultimate. they get married it's almost like he resents her and resentment is like uh the word like what is that like the so antithesis of like so, fucking uh, so obligation is the opposite of desire yeah and 56 percent of the marriages in this country end in divorce <laughs> i just want to say i did it you know? of course <laughs> i just like i was like why don't we just throw you a party i'm like no, I want to like really like love someone and get married and then just have my heart broken and then just feel like I'm going to die. Maybe. I don't know. I just think like life's all about experiences and I think that everyone should do it and then not do it and then get divorced and then say, ah, I wish I was never married. But it's better to have loved and to have lost than to have never loved at all. And I truly believe in that. And some people can be like, no, I would rather not get hurt. But I, like I said, life is all about experience. I think at some point you don't want to get hurt anymore. I, I, I will tell yeah. you, the, the, the bad endings of previous relationships, <laughs> crazy. the bad endings of previous relationships I have, I don't regret being in those relationships because I learned so much. Yeah. But I think if I had to do that 10 times, I'd be like, <laughs> fuck all of you. Yeah. Get away from me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like survival school in the military. It's yeah. fun. To, it's, it, you go through it once, you live, and then afterwards you're like, I don't want to do that again. Um, okay, so, let me, so I have some questions from some of my... Uh, my clients mm. and some of my buddies, they yeah. have some questions for you. One of the questions, I like this one, what can an average guy do to become visible to you? So let me, let me set this up for, oh. for, his, for his context. So um, there's a GSS survey that came out in 2018 and they ask how many sexual partners had um, per men or women had in the last year. Uh -huh. And about 12% of women said that they had zero. What percentage of men do you think had zero? I don't know. Well, it was about 28%. Yeah. Right now, it's about 33%. About a third of men have had zero sexual partners in the last That's year. That's not good. That could cause... Huh. I don't know what that could cause. That could cause people to strap dynamite onto their chest yeah. and try to blow up yeah. a, try to blow up a, a coffee shop in Tel Aviv. Yes, that is, that's happened in I think in there's other also... Countries. Yeah, there's this, like, this culture of women who are like, he has to be this, 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 is this, and this. I'm like, do what I do and just love yourself. And if a guy's just like fucking awesome and just date him... It's really easy. People try to, 
People are trying to make everything so complicated. Do you think maybe it could be a little easier though for you? It's almost like Shaquille O'Neal not, <laughs> not complaining about being tall. You know what I'm saying? Or Michael Jordan not complaining <laughs> about being. Why don't you all just jump and have 45 inch verticals like me? Don't you? Do you think? Michelle, I think it's really hard to date as a guy. I uh, think uh, girls are intense okay, now. Okay, there you go. Now that's that's. It's the truth. fucking. It's they're intense. Yeah, but like I'm not gonna. I, would, no, I wouldn't want to be. There's that no either. dude. There's there's a couple of like billionaires that are coming yeah, to my birthday yeah. tomorrow, and all of them are gonna ask me about you. All of them. I already know. I already I know who they are. I know that they're gonna ask me about <laughs> who you. Are you. Yeah. But like I know super Why successful. Are you I know there's some there's some super successful dudes that are going to come tomorrow, and all of them are going to ask me about you. And and the <laughs> okay. thing is, from your standpoint, do you understand how the, your your experience might be different? Well, yeah. You did bring it up. You said it would be harder for men. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard as fuck. It's hard as fuck to date as a guy. Um, men are. I don't know. I I just I feel like. Women have the ability to emote in a community with each other and have like this kind of camaraderie where they can just be like, yeah, I went through this and this and that, yeah. And they can come to a point where they're like, why don't we just rid all men from our lives and be alone and lesbians? And I'm like, okay, well, that's not really love. Love is loving all people, whatever gender they are, um, especially men. So, you know, I think that they, they, I think women have just come, become really hardcore on um, certain aspects of dating, and I think they just say everybody needs to lighten up, like you know, just have some, I don't know, smoke yeah, but, some okay, weed and do fucking you, do relax. You oh, but do you understand how if you're one of those thirty three percent of men know, have had I zero know, sexual I, partners in the last uh, year, it's kind of hard to lighten up. You understand? No, I understand. Um, I get it. I don't know. I don't. I would just say that women need to. I don't know. Why is and it like way, this? You, you don't, you don't, I don't, hold on, tell me, you don't yeah. need to be frustrated. The, 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 the answer <laughs> yeah, yeah. is, that's all we talk about on this yeah. podcast. This was an evolutionary psychology book behind it. The answer is, yeah. there is no answer. There is no answer. Okay. <laughs> the answer is, the there answer, is the, no the, like if there was a solution answer. to this, there would be no Oprah, Dr. Oz, you know, whatever. There would be no Fresh and Fit. There would be, there would be no Andrew Tate. No, all of this, I, oh, Andrew Tate. The, Hi, Andrew Tate. <laughs> 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 I actually don't know him. Yeah, you don't know him. But um, God bless him. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of that's a lot of hate to come your way. I don't care if you're like the most evil person in the world or the nicest person in the world. I don't think anyone. I what is it called? Uh, Getting cancel culture. Yeah. That shit needs to go away. <sighs> because it it it's like there's just like such extremities to it, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that at some point everyone becomes a bully, and then we're just teaching people to kind of just, um, you know, like everyone. People are multifaceted. You can't just like fucking banish people, you know, for I don't know being themselves online. So like it's fucking ridiculous. Do you know what I'm saying? Of course, I, that's all I talk about. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> I wish I wish it was easier to date. Maybe get rid of dating apps. I don't know. How about try that? Get rid of dating apps. Use that. Go go walking walk down the fucking street. That's what I would do. Yeah, but the, so here's here's. Uh, the, but what if everyone did that? Yeah. I know that I know it's impossible. It's happen, yeah. But what if we came to this like consensus that like dating apps caused like? I don't think dating apps are the problem. There is no, here's the thought. First off, from an evolutionary standpoint, there is no problem. You want to know why? Why? Because there's 7.7 .7 billion humans on the planet and 400,000 elephants. We fucking won. There yeah. is no problem. As far I, I could very much disagree with Elon Musk about this whole population problem. Uh -huh. The planet would be just fine with 1 billion people. <laughs> uh, now, here's the thing. There is, no, there is no problem. What it is is that we are both in a game theory but you and I, as uh, me as a man, you as a woman. Ooh, game theory. We, we are both in a game theory dilemma yeah. where there's there's only temporary solutions yeah. for temp for partials, temporary partial solutions. Yeah. Meaning, like, whereas a man would be like, I want all tens all the time, anytime I want. Okay. That would be his permanent, full time, all the time solution. Mm -hmm. And so lo we'll look at like the last couple chapters of Dan Bilzerian's book where he talks about getting that and still not being happy. And then we have women, and their solution <laughs> would be, I want full fecundity. Uh, full uh, transparency from a man who would never cheat on me and still provide the life that I want. And then for her, it's the same kind of situation where that's a temporary solution. The man is not exactly who she wants. And then eventually she breaks up with him. Like I said, 80% of the divorces in this country are initiated by women. So yeah. the, the, what, we, what we've come to is, again, we're both in this game theory dilemma yeah. and we come up with partial solutions that are, that are temporary. That's essentially what the 
answer is. And in the interim, the population of the planet continues to increase. So there is no problem from an evolutionary standpoint. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. That makes that's sense. the actual answer to, that's a, the very cold, unromantic answer to the actual question that you're answering, that you're Aww. asking. Does that make sense? Your pecs look nice. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to all this. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, that was my response. There you go. Um, so what what can an average guy do to get your attention? That, that was <clears> a, the original part I was saying. Because the stalk average- Stalk me. Stalk you? Okay. Stalk me. Okay. Like where? Where should they stalk you on? IG? Around. <laughs> Oh, physically around? <laughs> Stalk me. Come show up at my, show up at my house. <laughs> my God. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> George just did that take, old ASMR. Stalk me at my house. Show, just show up. Take pictures of me from my window. From my window. Tell me how beautiful I am every day. Send me <laughs> put heart emojis in my on my comments on Instagram. Every I'm not day. kidding. If you think I'm every kidding, I'm day. not kidding. Validate me. <laughs> Validate me. <Wait>. Ah. <laughs> there you go. We're working on it, bro. I'm trying, every, every, <laughs> hey, George, every day, one, one day closer to getting canceled. Yes, every day. Can I start moaning? Yeah, do it. Go ahead, start moaning. <sighs> Okay, sorry. No, we we really will get canceled. No, we will not get canceled. Well, we go able to go on YouTube. No, we'll go on YouTube. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, they, yeah, you, just you want them to stalk, stalk you. me. Okay, stalk me, like in a romantic way. <laughs> <laughs> you, every guy who stalks you, it thinks it's a romantic. <laughs> They all think they're being romantic. You understand? I think it's romantic. You want to know something crazy, George? I don't know if you know this. So if you ever read, uh, there's a book called Why Women, women Have Sex. And one of the chapters in it has to do with like extortion, like really bad reasons why women <laughs> end up having sex. One of the chapters is on stalking. And you want to know why men stalk? Because 8% of the time it fucking works. That's the reason why. It's a it's really true. scary statistic. It's so true. about one in 12 times, the, the woman straight up says, I started dating this guy because he just wouldn't leave me alone and I didn't see any other option. That's Don't not a happy shy. ending, but that actually does happen. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I, I mean, I think we have our first ever case that I've ever seen. Where they're asking <laughs> to where stalk they're you? Asking for it. That's incredible. Um, what if the guys are like, well, she wants it, so therefore I'm not going to do it. What if that, <laughs> that's what happens. I mean, men are, men will be very confused from this podcast, but uh, like Good. you said, women are complex <laughs> creatures. Yes. Um, I don't know. Stalk me. Tell me how pretty I am. Words of affirmation. Uh we talked about that last night. Your love language is words of affirmation and physical touch. Oh, no, it's physical touch. Yeah. For sure. Words don't mean shit. Words are shit. I've never listened to words. I've had a man get on one knee and tell me he's going to marry me and love me the rest of my life. And then he didn't do that. Mm. So actions. Look at people's actions. I guess to get my attention... I would say go out of your way to find me. It's very hard. I'm like I'm like always hidden in my house. So <laughs> walking down the street, you like stop me and be like, Elizabeth, I've been looking at you through your window all week. And I just wanna <laughs> tell you <laughs> how beautiful you are. And I was watching this podcast and I was like, Oh, you listened. Someone actually listened. <laughs> I like a man that also listens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm 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 being too I'm being too sarcastic. You want um, some? I am not. No, look at. I got my favorite drink is tequila. Also, if you do approach me on the street, um, bring tequila. Beautiful. Yeah. There you go. Oh, awesome. <laughs> okay, uh, that's amazing. It uh, is amazing. That was an amazing answer to that question. Uh, can we talk about a couple other things you did? So you were on Entourage. You did a bunch of music videos. Oh, yeah. Music I love videos. Entourage. Yeah. Uh, you did uh, shoot for I was for Entourage movie. Yes, the Entourage movie. Yeah. Uh, you did uh, uh, shoot for 138 Water. Can you yeah. talk about all that? Oh, that was so fun. Um, so 138 Water. Okay, so actually, who is his name? Who? In Entourage? No, 138 Water. So actually how 138 Water came to be is I shot with... Uh, um, You're going to say it and I'll remember. I do remember. His dad's I, a rock star. I don't know. He's like fucked up. Um, <laughs> hey, George, can you Google who found <clears throat> 138 Water? Gotcha. Sean something. Mm -hmm. Sean. Sean. God damn it. It's all, it's all good. We'll look it up. Yeah. 
Oh God, what is his name? Am I fucking hate this? It's fine. What what happened? Anyways, so Sean, I think his name's Sean. Um, start uh, one three water, and then um, I took pictures up with him, and that ended up on the Daily Mail, TMZ, and he was like, <clears throat> he's been in and out of rehab. He's a fucking nightmare guy. Um, he dated Adrian Maloof. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know who the Maloofs are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we I shot with him. So that was the thing. Like I sh- like um, a photographer like messaged me. I like, reached out to me like on Instagram. This is like in 2014. He was like, "Will you come shoot with um, my water brand with Sean Stewart? Sean Stewart. Okay. And um, Rod Stewart, son. And uh, he was like, um, we're doing this like water photo shoot. I'm like, that's weird. So I get there and Sean Stewart's there, um, a little drunk. <laughs> and we just do these like fucking weird photos with this like holding the water. And there's like a pink flamingo. Um, I'll just show you it. And then... Uh, so yeah, those were like all over like TMZ and like the Daily Mail. Just like look at it, Sean Stewart again being weird, you know. And then from there, the photographer was like, "Hey, do you want to do a, um, a campaign?" And I was like, "Yeah." So I had one billboard on Sunset at Roxbury, and then one billboard on Sunset in La Brea. It was so cool. I, I saw them. It was for my twenty-first birthday. I was I drove up there and saw um, uh, the billboards. Uh, this is twenty fifteen. Um, and I just like, I was like, that's me on a billboard. That's fucking crazy. Like right next to pink taco. Yeah. I, I saw the billboard. I, I didn't <laughs> yeah. know you at the time, but yeah. I, yeah. I you saw me. Yeah. Why didn't you stop? I'm sorry. I, my, my stalk- See what happens guys. My stalking game is a two out of 10. <laughs> I'm not good at stalking. I apologize. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. You know what? You know what he says? What does he, just do it. Yeah. Why don't, why don't guys just do it? They like, he told them, he told me, he's like, just do it. What's his name? I don't know. Mark Wahlberg. Uh, no. no um, you know, the, the fucking, the t- Holes movie. I don't know. He hates that, I'm sure. He's from the Holes movie. No idea. <laughs> um, yeah. So, One Day Water. So, uh, I w- you did a bunch of music videos? Oh, yeah. So, I was um, with, uh, I shot with Major, uh, Major Ali at the time was his name. And he had just shot um, with Justin Bieber in this music video. So, he was like blowing up. Um, and it was Waka Flocka Flame. Waka Flocka Flame. The Ying Yang Twins. <laughs> um, and it was really cool. We shot two music videos in the same day or two days. And it was really cool. It was really cool to see. Oh, and then Jeremiah. Jeremiah was another music video I did. Um, yeah, that was fucking awesome. That was just, it was just cool to like be around. I didn't really know who Jeremiah was. And I was like, oh no, he's kind of huge. So, um, but yeah, and then uh, Major still hits me up to this day. Mm. I never went on a day with him. He has hit me up like ever since I was on that shoot, and that was in 2014. That's a long time. So for sure, <laughs> I just I think I think you know like, you, you know no, but but like if it was you know someone else, I'd be like anything you want. Really? <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh, you're saying if someone else stalked you, yeah, you'd be yeah. like because you're just waiting for someone to stalk you. Yeah. I got it. Okay, got it. No. Yes. Yes. Yes means no. Got it. Not all the time. <laughs> no. I'm there, su- there are there are safe words. So. I am sufficiently confused. All right, here we go. Um, you did uh, what? The other one was Entourage movie. What, what what happened there? Oh, I was an airline stewardess, and also I did the scene at the global uh, the the Golden Globes, the end scene when drama receives his award. So, um, this was uh, this Entourage movie came out in 2015. I shot. Um, I was an airline stewardess with Tom Brady. Speaking of Tom Brady, he looks like hell right now. Really? There's a picture of him, yeah. Oh, you're talking about after he went through, he left the... the yeah, like really recently. So when I shot, he's the nicest guy I've ever met. Hmm. He's super skinny and really tall. And he is so kind. I was like, do you want to take a picture with you? My brother's a huge, huge fan of yours. And he's like, yes, of course. And we had just shot the scene. So it was when uh, drama, was new, or like video of him jerking off went around. And I was on... Uh, I was the airline stewardess on the scene that they were like looking at the laptop watching him jerk off. So Got it. Yeah. He's the nicest guy. Like okay. nicest celebrity I've met. I I would say. Yeah. Tom Brady. Yeah, and then the scene um at well, the Golden hey, Grammy. Listen, he's about to be single here pretty soon, so. I mean, uh, yeah. He is uh he's <sighs> like 3 months older than me. It's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I, when I wake up every morning I'm like, dude, playing quarterback in the NFL Just the way I feel play. now. The way I Put feel now. Coach, yeah. I couldn't imagine, man. <laughs> Um, all right, so Entourage movie. 
Um, there's a couple things you mentioned before. Actually, I'm, I'm really interested in this because this was several. When I Google oh. you, this article comes up over and over again. And this was the thing where you said you were you cannot find a guy because you were too beautiful. Dude, that's just, this is what I'm talking about, that I put out this preconceived notion of me. No, that's not true. I put out the article for shock and awe just to piss people off. And it worked. And like, I don't know, there's like 6,000 comments on there talking about this bitch, her fucking lips and her boobs how dare you come on here and say that you're beautiful and can't find a man who do you think you are fuck you like i was just reading this i was like laughing i'm like these fucking people literally go online and write a comment and i did read them i read every single one <laughs> and i cried a little bit but you know what i i didn't put those articles out. I, I let them go out and they are like were concocted all these articles. Was this a PR move? This is a PR move. So you hired, full you, on. you had a, you had a yeah, PR, PR person. PR company, Jam okay. Press, uh -huh. put out all, all the articles. I said yes. So I was, I am liable yeah. for, you know, what culpable. was said? Culpable. Yeah, culpable. You're not, yeah, you're not liable. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, whatever. And then, so the reaction was afterwards, you, you hate. I mean, oh, I got, to, oh, I got a million DMs. Yeah. Um, I'm sure your I'm sure your IG grew from this. Oh yeah, fuck course. yeah. No, there was like I have millions of guys in my DMs. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, a couple of them I did talk to. So, but and then again, it was like I didn't go anywhere because like I don't want people to meet me through my Instagram. So, yeah. like I said, show up in my house. <laughs> 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 fuck. So creepy. So, it's like you're being creepy asking me. I to am be creepy. creepy. No one said I wasn't creepy. Yeah. There were a few ask, ask Dead Mouse. There were a few times last night. <laughs> I'm just kidding. A little creepy. Yeah. Whatever. All right. So let's uh, let's talk about this. Uh you um you you said before you mentioned Dead Mouse. You also mentioned Tyra, <gasps> but last night Oh we, God. When we I were, was texting him. Well last night when we were sitting there, you said you knew a bunch of gossip. Oh, do you remember what we're talking about? Which one? You, oh, that was about... What happened? The, what was about you, the, you said you knew a bunch of things. Well, I can't tell you which one we're talking about. Okay, how about one this? of them has a really close man friend, and I just think that they are gay. Okay. But I don't know. I, it, could be, it could be three people I'm talking about, Got so it. I'm not going to say which one it is. Um, I don't care. Just, 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 then it wouldn't make that person so angry all the time, you know? Yeah. That's all I'll say. I remember you saying that. Was there any other gossip that you wanted to point out? Uh, huh. It's fine. We, no, we, no, I, that was it. That was, I mean, like, you know, I can't go into specific details because then it's going to be like, oh, yes, we know who we're talking about. Right. <sighs> Who's angry? Yeah. You know? Uh, li listen, I, <laughs> w we, I think one of the issues is... Um, it's not obviously. There's no problem with being a homosexual man. That's no, all, that's, I don't. If but you, if you, but if you want to come you, out and say no, no, hold but on. You, not, if you I'm, can't, then you're angry. I'm not, yeah, I'm not talking about you. But like in, in in theory, that's not the issue. The issue is like I think there's a lot of people that are misled into thinking yeah. they're dating someone that they're not, and then they get angry. And that's not a function of like like homophobia. It's just a function of like I would like to know um, the history of the people that I date, not to judge them, yeah. but I get, I also get, I get a say in my life. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I get a say in my life. Mm -hmm. So I would, I maybe need to know before we get married, if you're a felon, it doesn't mean we're True. not going to get married, but I get to know certain mm -hmm. things. And I would, I would want, if I was a woman, I would want to know if the, the guy I was dating was also sleeping with men. I don't think there's anything wrong with you <laughs> wa at wanting, asking that question. Right. There we go. What are we doing? Taking pictures of me. Oh, we're taking don't pictures. Stop. Of <laughs> oh, can you show her? Don't show me. I don't know what you're showing me. There we go. Beautiful. Um, can you talk about the difficulties of dating <sighs> as an influencer? This is something I ask a lot of the, the people who this come on this This is really hard to do. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, yeah, dating as an influence. I mean, I don't know if I can influencer, am I? Yeah, you you've crossed the influencer I don't line. Sell, I don't sell a product. I'm not promoting the, the, anything. I'm not influencing anything. You're influencing people to follow you on different platforms, <gasps> and you, the the product you're selling is yourself. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm not monetizing it then. I'm a fucking idiot. I mean, you, I, like, I mean, you do have an OF, right? 
I mean, I did. It's like, it's just there. I don't promote it anymore, though, because I'm in fear of my account getting taken down on my Instagram. Mm. So I've seen a lot of girls just fucking, they're like got millions of followers. Yeah, so just just make a second account. And yeah. Then, and, then, and then link your OF to I know. I, I guess I just would say that I'm a lazy person for anything here. Um, I don't monetize like everybody else. Um, but yeah, it's very hard to date as an influencer. Um, people put you on a pedestal and they, you know, it's hard for them to see, like once, once you become a real person and they're like, oh, this is a real person. They have, you know, imperfections or they, this idealized version of them that I put in my head is not who they t panned out to be. And then it's like, it's like, then they get mad at you for not, going up to the expectation of this mm. idea that they had in their head, so. They're dating IG photos. And They're you... dating IG photos. Okay. Might as well just watch anime porn, right? Mm. Is that, what is it called? Or anime hen porn. Uh, shout out, uh, hold on, shout out to the. What... <laughs> that's, that's the, that's what I, that's what my motif is. That's why the poops and like the, you know, like I'm like an anime character. It's my goal in life. To be an anime character? Oh, well, like a real life one. Mm. Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, I can't tell no anymore. One, like, I got sarcasm. Why I, is someone calling me I from San Diego? I can't tell anymore. Oh, uh, your favorite people to work with? You. Oh, I really appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I love you, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. He's literally the, like, the nicest guy I've met. I've met a lot of people. I met, you know, Caleb. I met Caleb. Caleb, Caleb car carried me home drunk when I was like 21. I will say 21 little when you're younger when omnia opened mm. and i was like i woke up and i was like thank you so much because like i didn't know i was so blissfully so drunk i'm like i didn't know how to get back to my hotel room and he helped me like yeah and, and like all the other girls in my room were like where were you i'm like you don't fucking help. <laughs> bring me back and he did he's a good guy so yeah um but uh yeah there's not very many people i like love in the industry you know yeah um, photographers, agents, all of them have been really nice to me. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. <sighs> what is your, I ask every guest, yeah. your belief about monogamy for you specifically and then as a species? Oh. <laughs> monogamy. It's something everybody wants. Everybody wants to be with some, like, not really, but like everybody wants like, you know, to be close with another person in some respects. You know? They just... Need, like it's just nice to have someone to like you know close to maybe like maybe like if you don't have like a best friend or whatever but i don't know <sighs> i'm getting tired i need an energy drink no you need another energy drink? okay <laughs> here, 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 i got i got a couple questions here for you um real quick okay fine i think that monogamy is 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 it it's it's like um like mo monogamy like in relationships or marriage or like there's different like facets of mono monogamy and i would say that um the only facet we're talking about is the idea of just being with one person and not oh with, with one person the rest of your life yes yes that's the only facet i'm yeah that's to. how i am i am very possessive unfortunately this is my personality i've come to terms with it i can't be with multiple people whether it's just like i'm possessive to myself like i can't see another person I just can't. I can't do it. I, I know other people can, and I know I hate them for it, but like once I'm with someone, it's like that's all I see and that's all that matters to me. So I don't understand how people go around giving it. It's, it's almost like a betrayal, you know? It's, it's like betraying someone. And then, and honestly, you're just like betraying yourself. So like I couldn't look at myself in the mirror and be like, this is this is a good thing that I'm doing, you know? So I don't know how people do it every day. Just go around cheating on their wife or whatever. It's fucked. And um, I think monogamy is the most beautiful thing. I think it shows strength and endurance. I think if someone could be with someone and love them every day because marriage is fucking hard or dating someone, whether a piece of paper or not, um, and just like loving that person every day and being like committed to them, that's fucking like, that's the hardest job in the world. I don't care what you say, like having to like emote every day and like, you know, extend yourself to another person is, and love them for decades is, it's like probably the hardest thing. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it takes <laughs> a while. Yeah. If, if, if it's not the natural state, yeah, it takes yeah, a lot yeah. of work. Yeah, for sure. 
Uh, I want to read um, your qu questionnaire. So I actually <sighs> used to do this. Uh, no, I did. I did this for Playboy Plus. Mm, yeah. Uh, the questionnaires that they ask the girls, <laughs> and the, the 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 answers are shower naked. You'll never you're never gonna believe this, guys. A lot of times the answers are made up. They're not true. But I actually want your response to your own answers. Mm. Sound good? Okay. Yes. Here we go. First one. How can a man get your attention? Do you remember what you wrote? <sighs> um. Come up to me. I think it's like somewhere along the lines of like approach me or something. He, he can be confident down to earth. I like oh. a man who knows what he wants and gets it. Yeah. Get what you want. Come, come get me. Come stalk you. Yeah. <laughs> come stalk my God. <laughs> if something bad happens to you, I'm going to feel so guilty. A lot of things have already happened. To me. Okay. There's nothing worse that could happen. Uh, what's, the, what's the worst pickup line you've ever heard? Hey, babe, hey baby, you're tired. What's, okay. You've been running through my mind all day. Oh, this no. Okay, said. so what did I this say? Was, th that was your answer. Oh, yeah. Someone said that to me, and I was like, what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> like, go fuck yourself. Don't talk to me <laughs> ever again. <laughs> How do you let him I, I was, like, almost offended. I'm like, you think that you could, like, say that to me and me to respond? Like, he doesn't know me, but yeah. Um, it's terrible. How do you let a man know you're interested? I'm very direct. Hmm. I'll tell you, I'll come straight straight up to me like, I want to fuck you. Mm. And that's it. Got it. These but not, not like that. I'm joking. I'm joking. How do I let someone know that I like them? Um, I actually don't. I'm very standoffish. Like if we're actually, so it's probably opposite of what I said. I'm very standoffish. I'm very cold. I'm very like, um, because I'm like assessing you and I'm studying you. And then once I kind of like see all the inner workings of you and then I'm like, okay. And then I become like obsessive mm. in a good way, not yeah. like in a bad way. And then you're all I think about like and you consume my day and in a good way, not like completely consume, but like you are the person that I love and almost like you, you are now, you are now my person. I've claimed you. <laughs> almost <laughs> so like yeah. a stalker. No, I'm not a stalker. Okay. Am I a stalker? No. <laughs> uh, okay. So tell us about your ideal date. Um, probably the, I don't know what I said. Uh, the perfect date for me is an amazing conversation. I find it important to get oh, lost yeah. in the person at the moment. Yeah, exactly. I think it's very important. I like, I love talking and like just debating with people. Um, you know, I just, I just love it. So yeah. just like kind of like learning the person, uh, yeah, so that, that's, that is accurate. I actually, I probably thought about these answers and like edited them and like proofread them and, you know. Uh, what about a man turned you on the most? <sighs> I like a salt of the earth kind of guy. Interesting. Yeah. Like uh, down to earth, like to the earth. I don't like someone who, even if they come off like kind of like um, not uh, pessimistic, but like. Almost a little bit of it, but just like real realistic and just very like dry and raw and like very uh, like, I don't know, just very sure of themselves, but like in a very like mature way, What not about, like in an outgoing way. What about a man turns you on the most? <clears throat> that was that. That's yeah, confidence I mean. is king. Also, uh, I also love a man who is witty. Oh, I love witty. witty. Yeah, okay. you got to be funny. Yep. Still, yeah. still working on that one. All right, so here we go. When do you, uh, when do you feel the sexiest? Oh, I know this one. When I'm naked in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Why did I say that? That's so embarrassing. <laughs> it's just so god. Damn. See, guys, like when you've been on both sides of this, it's just you just understand that the. I actually like do feel. No, I think it's like when I'm naked alone walking in my apartment. Can, okay, got you it. Can, you know, come take a gander, so. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, biggest celebrity crush? <gasps> Ooh. I like Timothy Alef Elephant. Okay. Um, oh, Timothy Oliphant. Oliphant. Yeah. And, you know, like the girl next door. So sexy. Mm. You wrote Alexander Skarsgård. Oh yeah, that too. Skarsgård. Yeah. Actually, not anymore. It's changed. Now I like Javier Bardem. I don't know who that is. Okay. Like what, what was it? What was like um, from the Silence of the Lambs? It puts the lotion on the skin, or it gets the hose again. Oh, that that guy. <laughs> yeah. 
put the lotion in the it basket. It puts the lotion. No, like all from Sans. What uh, was it? He played like something. Uh, he was like the country guy. Mm. No country for old no, men. Oh, no, that. no, no. Silence of the Lambs. You know, the guy with the white hair. Wow. Where he was like hiding some. No, Anthony Martin. Javier Bardem. Okay, we'll look it up. What do you mean you don't know this? I don't know. You've never seen Silence. I've seen, of... I've seen it several times. I didn't know. You know the guy who's the girl in the I remember, hole? I, that's Wild Bill, yeah. Yeah, Wild Bill. Yeah, but I, remember, I don't remember the actor's name. Yeah. You have a crush on that guy who was probably in his mid-40s 25 years ago? Well, I mean, Javier Bardem is a very good-looking man. Okay, got it. So, very suave. Uh, what's your... What, oh, here we go. What's your favorite thing to do in the bedroom? Um, probably sleep. Uh, cuddle with my French bull bulldog oh, apple. Oh, like, cuddle with my French bulldog apple. Yeah. I love apple. I really do. I love her. This is like the sweetest dog ever. This is my favorite answer. Uh -huh. uh, what should a man never do in the bedroom? Ask me, is this okay? Am I doing this okay? Is this all right? Does this feel good? Just do it. You know, yeah. don't second guess yourself, man. Just put it in. And if it sucks, and if, but if you <laughs> <laughs> but if you're keep going, keep going, but if you're confident and you suck, you'll get a, you'll you'll be like, you know what? He wasn't that big, but he was really confident about it. <laughs> it's all about confidence. You can't be asking me like, you know, does that feel right? Like if you're like if you just like are fucking me and you have a one inch dick, then and you're like you just like fucking own it. <laughs> that is so so sexy. How to do it? That's the that's the only way to do it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Um. Okay. Any uh, sex? Any sexy fantasies? Um. You're probably gonna change this answer. Huh. It says anything involving my fiance, of course. Oh fuck my leg. Right? I I'm that's surprised you put that in there. It's online forever. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Uh. Lastly, what is your guiltiest pleasure? Uh, I don't know. Rainbow sherbet in the bathtub. What the fuck? That's so lame. I changed that answer. My guilty pleasure is... God, what is it? Let me get rid of these tissues. Just throw them. Put them on the floor. It's fine. <sighs> what is my guilty pleasure? Oh, now it's like... I mean, it changes every month, but uh, getting tattoos and then getting them removed in the really? same month. Yeah. I got uh, someone's name tattooed on my ring finger. And now I'm getting it removed. Don't ask. <sighs> I met someone in Bali. And I knew him for two days. And then I got a tattoo of him. And then I removed it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you met this dude, were you, uh, when you initially... No I, had, no, I was just in Bali. You know what happens when you're in Bali? No, I've never been there. Everything. Yeah? You, you transcend, you know. You see machine elves. And you go into the, you go into the ether. Um... And you just like, I had, I was at a club in Bali on the beach and there was a guy reading my tarot cards. Okay. And he said to me, you'll meet someone and it won't work out. I'm like, yeah. Okay. And then it happened. So maybe tarot cards are real, but it's also witchcraft. When you met this guy, like what made you like the guy in Bali? Oh, I just had a lot of tequila and yeah. I was just like, you know what? I was scanned the room. And I was like, yeah, that's the one. He looks like Aquaman. Okay. I was like, that guy looks like Aquaman. I have to meet him. I'm like, and I came out to him, I'm like, you look just like Aquaman. And he was like, thank you. That's so nice. And we just like talking. He's like got a British accent. And I was like, that's cool. You know, British accent dude from Polly. Um, yeah. And then it was just two days and then I left. And then, you know, we talked and. And I was just like, listen, you live 30 hours away from me. And uh, I don't know. I just, I knew him for two days. Oh, you don't have to explain to me. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes you just, I, I'm an Aries. I just fucking do things. Um, do you, there's a fucking debate. Do it. There's, I hear this debate between men and women about mm. whether or not women make men wait to have sex with them or don't wait. What do you think? Uh, I don't really fucking think it matters. Oh, there's so many opinions on this. If a man, like, you can't fucking know what someone's thinking about you inside their head. I slept with my ex-fiance the first time I met him. 
you know, what the fuck? And then... And you started off hating him that day. I hated him, yeah. It, it, there's no fucking, like, people want to make there's rules. There's no rules. Just do it. Just, just go for it. Just jump. Because, like, if you wait around thinking about it, oh, there's a million ways it could go right, and there's a million ways it could go wrong. Is, is tequila the t- common denominator? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen Tequila that. makes my clothes come off, as my mom says, too. Mm. Just kidding, but I love tequila. Tequila's great. And, you know, it doesn't make me feel gross. Wine makes me feel really, like, just flushed. Sure, yeah. And, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I would say, so I went up to him. I just would say that he was just um, very interesting looking. I told you about this. I, I go for very awkward, interesting guys. Hence why I was really interested in Dead Mouse because he's just, like, weird. Oh, this is not weird. <laughs> but he's, like, he's not, like, your typical hot guy, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, um, and I I might be a typical hot girl. I don't know. Just, you know, boobs, loves, like tall, whatever. Fucking shit. Playboy. So you would assume that I would be with like, I don't know, like, like a bodybuilder guy or Mm. like a blonde guy or just like, like, you know, that kind of guy. I like, like the weird skinny dude, you know, Mm. or not only the skinny, but like, there's like the weird guy. He doesn't have to be skinny. It's just like the, the weird guy. You know, just like just weird things. <laughs> just I don't know. I just like my personality matches them more. Makes sense. Say, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like tequila helps. Give a girl tequila. That's work. Don't give them wine. Makes them go to sleep. Tequila, uh, vodka, just kind of like, kind of makes you feel a little bit gross. Like there's like a pit in your stomach. Tequila, just like it's just fun and like you're just like alive and just love tequila. Like a good tequila, not a tequila that makes like rubbing alcohol, like just like, you know, yeah. Jose Cuervo, Blanco. Jose Cuervo. <laughs> Jose Cuervo makes you die. All right, guys. Uh, so great to have you on. Where can people find you, love? Um, I'm only on Instagram or only on Facebook. I'm on Instagram at Marie E C H E V. Is that right? Yeah. Is there two E's in that? No, I don't. I don't know. I can't see that far. Is that bad? There's two E's. Hey, listen, fi- she can't see Come that. find me. Oh, Let's she, have some fun. She, she, she can't see that far, so all of us have a chance. That's great. Shut up. <laughs> all right. <laughs> awesome. Hey. Uh, Happy birthday. I appreciate it's your it. It's your birthday. Happy birthday, Michael. I appreciate it. Aww, Thank you. Everybody wish him happy birthday in the comments, and if you don't, I'll find you. Like, I remember my like, wedding crasher. I don't know where you are, but I'll find you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. I appreciate that. Thank yeah, we're so going to go party. We're going we're gonna to fucking sh- slam tequila in 1942. Got it. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining yes. us. I love the fact that we can have uh, such a variety <laughs> of guests on today. And, uh, you know, we met at uh, Babes of Toilet and I interviewed her. And I remember when we were doing the interview, you felt awkward. And then afterwards talking to you and being like, there's a lot more to this. And I want to, yeah. uh, I wanted, yeah. I wanted to interview you. So yeah. when you came out here, I really do appreciate I'm that. I'm so thankful. And Michael um, is not only very handsome and has nice pecs, he is also the most kindest man I've ever met. So... Drop him a comment, say happy birthday, or I'll kill you all. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. What a great way to end. I can't do any better than that, George. That's all. That's awesome. Let's threaten the audience. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys are, uh, you guys, man, I don't even know what to say anymore. Um, hey, once again, man, thank you. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please tell your friends. Hey, uh, last week I got 28,000 shares, which is mind-blowing to me because um, you guys are, are taking the clips that were posted on TikTok and the clips that were posted on IG and you're sharing them. And I really do appreciate that. Everywhere I go, I'm having people uh, bring up uh, the podcast. So I do appreciate that. The thing is, I, I don't feel like it's me. I feel like it's a function of curiosity. And I also feel like when I came up with the idea for this podcast, it was that I was going to make my opinions based on science, statistics, things like that. I wanted to keep it, it as close to scientifically based as possible and then listen to what the people I was interviewing had to say. And it looks... to to me so far like that's worked out so that's the way i want to keep going with it please check us out we're going to start doing a bi-monthly podcast myself and rollo tomasi are going to start doing access vegas it's going to be a live stream it's going to be my first ever live stream so please make sure you subscribe so you can get notifications for the live stream and we are going to cause some havoc it's going to be at 10 p.m uh on fridays uh not not every friday but probably every other friday we're going to do it right here at sticky paw studios and we're going to have a panel
panel of incredible ladies to come on and talk about their experiences and to talk about we for instance what we what we're planning on doing is we're going to have some pretty controversial statements from the manosphere and we're going to have some women react to it and see what they think about it uh, that's how we're going to start off the podcast so i appreciate that guys make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you can get more of that i'm very happy we're going to be hanging out for the next couple yeah. days uh, marie's out here until saturday when we're going to do that charity event and i will see all of you next Bye. week